the Senate in the second regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. Senator Francis Pangilinan will lead the chamber in prayer. We begin our prayer with an excerpt from the homily of Pope Francis in his Sunday Mass yesterday at the St. Peter's Basilica. Dear brothers and sisters, 500 years have passed since the Christian message first arrived in the Philippines. You receive the joy of the gospel, the good news that God so loved us that he gave his son for us, and this joy is evident in your people. We see it in your eyes, on your faces, in your songs, and in your prayers, in the joy which you bring your faith to other lands. Sometimes we look for joy where it is not to be found, in illusions that vanish, in dreams of glory, in the apparent security of material possessions, in the cult of our image, and so many other things. But life teaches us that joy, true joy, comes from realizing that we are loved gratuitously, knowing that we are not alone, having someone who shares our dreams, and who, when we experience shipwreck, is there to help us and lead us to a safe harbor. On the quincentennial of Christianity in our country, let us pray. Father Almighty, we thank you for the gifts of faith and hope. Throughout our most testing times as a people, your cross has been our source of strength. Your love is the reason Filipinos can bear with smile and song the heaviest burdens. Because of this gift, our people, we have become witnesses not only to the joy of prayer, but to the certainty of miracles. Today is also the first year of the pandemic lockdown. One year ago today, isang umaga, gumising tayo sa kakaibang katahimikan. Dinig ang mga yapak habang papalayo sa isa't isa. Dinig ang mga pintig ng puso na ang tinitibo ay pangamba. Dinig ang mga bulong na ang sinisigaw ay pagdamay. Dinig ang paghikbi sa pagluha sa mga nawala. Dinig ang mga panalangin na ang inilalambing ay pagasa. Isang umaga, gigising ulit tayo sa katahimikan. Payapang namumuhay, nagmamahal at nangangarap. Isang umaga sa awan ng Diyos, gigising din tayo ulit sa magandang bukas. Father, today and until the virus is vanquished, we pray for your healing hand. We also ask humbly for your guidance for us who, have, who serve in the Senate and in government. Protect our people. Protect our nation. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. <laughs> Secretary will please call the roll. Roll call of members, the Honorable Senators Angara. Present. Binay. Present. Cayetano. Present. De Lima. De La Rosa. Trilon. Present. Bachalian. Go. Present. 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 Go. Present. Ontiveros. Present. Laxon. Present. Lapid. Marcos. Present. Pacquiao. Present. Pangilinan. Present. Pimentel III. Present. 
Paul. Present. Recto. Present. Revilla Jr. Present. Tolentino. Present. Present. Villanueva. Villar. Present. Zubiri. Present. Senate President Soto III is present. With four senators physically present and 19 senators virtually present for a total of 23, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 57th session, Wednesday, March 10, 2021, and consider the same as approved. So moved, Mr. President. Any objection? Chair, here's none. The, mo the journal is approved. Mr. President, I move that we pro proceed to the re with the reference of business. The Secretary will proceed with the reference of business. Reference of business, bills on first reading, Senate number 2098, an act strengthening the National Housing Authority, extending its corporate term and amending for this purpose presidential decree number 757, creating the National Housing Authority and dissolving the existing housing agencies, defining its powers and functions, providing funds therefore and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Marcos. Referred to the committees on urban planning, uh, government corporations, and basic needs. Senate number 2099, an act regulating the manufacture, importation, sale, distribution, use, advertisement, promotion, and sponsorship of electronic nicotine delivery systems and electronic non-nicotine delivery systems, heated tobacco products, and other imitation tobacco products. Introduced by Senator Cayetano. Referred to the committees on trade and health. Resolutions, PS Resolution Number 677, Resolution Directing the Senate Committee on Urban Planning, Housing and Resettlement, and other appropriate committees to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the rising cost of construction materials in relation to the recent issuances of the Department of Trade and Industry, providing for the mandatory product certification of basic construction materials and its detrimental impact on the housing industry, introduced by Senator Tolentino. To the committees on Urban Planning and uh, Trade. PS Resolution Number 678, Resolution Directing the Appropriate Senate Committee to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation into the Continued Accumulation and Proper Disposal of Plastic Waste, Including Personal Protective Equipment During the COVID-19 Pandemic, Introduced by Senator Marcos. Referred to the Committees on Environment and Health. PS Resolution Number 679, Resolution Urging the Department of Social Welfare and Development to implement a quarterly release of the social pension of senior citizens instead of the current schedule of every six months, introduced by Senator Ontiveros. To the Committee on Social Justice. PS Resolution Number 680, Resolution Expressing the Sense of the Senate to urge the Department of Transportation to suspend the implementation of the Omnibus Franchising Guidelines and Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program for the duration of the COVID-19 pandemic, introduced by Senator Ontiveros. To the Committee on Rules. Communication letter from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas transmitting to the Senate a certified copy of circular letter number CL 2021-19 dated 4th March 2021 in compliance with Section 15A of the Public Act number 6753, the new Central Bank Act. To the Committee on Banks. Committee reports. Committee report number 193 submitted jointly by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House number 58. Five, five, introduced by Representative Zamora et al. entitled An Act Establishing the Second District Engineering Office in the Municipality of Compostela Province of Davao de Oro and Appropriating Funds Therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 194 submitted jointly by the Committees on Public Works and Finance and House number 5889 introduced by Representative Dimaporo et al. entitled An Act Providing for the Construction of a National Highway from, Na from Lanao del Norte Interior Circumferential Road in the Municipality of Togolon, Tagaloan, Province of Lanao del Norte to the Municipality of Talaga, Province of Bukidnon with a crossroad at Barangay Malimbato, Municipality of Tagolaon. Province of Lanao del Norte and connecting roads to the National Highway in Iligan City through Barangay Pugaan, Iligan City, and to the National Highway in Marawi City through the Municipality of Kapai, Province of Lanao del Sur, to be known as the Muslim Christian Unity Highway and appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. The business. 
Committee Report Number 195, submitted jointly by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House Number 5890, introduced by Representative Xiao et al., entitled An Act Creating the Illegal City District Engineering Office and Appropriating Funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. The calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report Number 196, submitted jointly by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House Number 5891, introduced by Representative Dimapor et al., entitled An Act reconstituting the Lanao del Norte District Engineering Office in the province of Lanao del Norte into two separate district engineering offices and appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. The calendar of ordinary business. Committee report number 197, submitted jointly by the Committees on Public Works and Finance and House number 6227, introduced by Representative Amatong et al., entitled, An Act Creating a Dis New District Engineering Office in the Third Legislative District of the Province of Zamboanga del Norte and appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the calendar of ordinary business. Committee report number 198, submitted by the Committee on Public Works on House number 6467, introduced by Representatives Mangawang and Madrona, entitled An Act Renaming the Portion of the Mountain Province Boundary, Kalanan and Rili Road, stretching from the Antonio Canal Bridge in Barangay Kalanan, traversing through Barangays Bulanao and Ipil, up to the Alyog Bridge in Barangay Nambaran, all in the city of Tabuk, in the province of Kalinga, as Manuel S. Agyao Boulevard, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsors, Senator Pacquiao. The calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 199 submitted jointly by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House number 6491, introduced by Representative Goetal, entitled An Act Mandating the Full Rehabilitation and Maintenance of Cannon Road under the Department of Public Works and Highways, recommending its approval without amendment sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 200, submitted jointly by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House number 6492, introduced by Representative Dalog et al., entitled An Act Converting the Sagada Besao Quirino Ilocos Sur Road into a National Road and Appropriating Funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. The Gallant of Ordinary Business. Committee Report Number 201, submitted jointly by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House Number 6585, introduced by Representative Ortega et al., entitled An Act Classifying the San Fernando Bypass Road and San Fernando Bypass Extension Road in the Province of La Union into a National Roads and Appropriating Funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. The Gallant of Ordinary Business. Committee Report Number 202, submitted by the Committee on Public Works on House Number 7355, introduced by Representative Adyong et al., entitled An Act Renaming the Marawi Magiang, Maging Bumabaran Wao Road, stretching from the city of Marawi, traversing through the municipalities of Maging, Bumbaran, and Wao, all in the province of Lanao del Sur, as Governor Mamintal M. Adyong Sr. National Road, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. Regardless of ordinary business. Committee Report Number 203, submitted by the Committee on Public Works on House Number 7499, introduced by Representative Castella et al., entitled An Act Renaming Del Monte Avenue, traversing Barangays Nayong, Canluran, Paltok, Paraiso, Del Monte, Damayan, Masambong, Talayan, Manresa, Shena, St. Peter's, San Jose, and NS Amoranto, located in Legislative District 1 of Quezon City as Fernando Poe Jr. Avenue, recommending its approval without amendment, taking into consideration Senate Number 1822, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the calendar for ordinary business. You're the leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, we have third reading uh, measures today to take up. I move that we approve on third reading House Bill number 8631. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, uh, motions approved. Secretary will uh, read the title of the measure and conduct a roll call vote. House Bill Number 8631, an act granting Philippine citizenship to Bienvenido Morejon Marañon. All of members, the Honorable Senators Angara. Binay. Mr. President, may we ask the, them to mute everyone? Uh, I believe they're still on mute. They cannot. EDP unmute can themselves. unmute, please. Uh, will please unmute. Everybody. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we can start again, Mr. President, with, with apologies. Roll call vote, the Honorable Senators. Angara. Yes. Pinay. Yes. Cayetano. Yes. De Lima. Oh, De La Rosa. Yes. Milon. Yes. Yes. 
Chalian. <laughs> Go. Yes, yes. Gordon. Yes. Ontiveros. Si. Si. Ay. <laughs> Laxon. Yes. Lapid. Marcos. Number no, number no, no. Yes. Pacquiao. Yes. Pangilinan. Yes. Pimentel the third. Yes. Yes. Po. Yes. Recto. Yes. Revilla Jr. Yes. Tolentino. Yes. Villanueva. Villar. Yes. Zubiri. Si, senorita. Yes, Senate yes, President yes. Soto III. <laughs> yes. With 23 affirmative votes, no negative votes, no abstention, House Bill 8631 is approved on third reading. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, I move that we approve as well on third reading House Bill number 8632. I so Any objection? Chair hears none. Secretary will read the title of the measure and conduct a roll call vote. House Bill number 8632, an act granting Philippine citizenship to Kaku Anj Frank Williams Kwame. Roll call vote the Honorable Senators. <clears throat> Angara. Wee oui, wee, oui. yes. <laughs> Dinay. Yes. Cayetano. Yes. De Lima. De La Rosa. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Cachalian. Go. Yes. Gordon. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Ontiveros. Aye. Axon. Yes. What's <laughs> Lax Laxon. Yes. yes. Lapid. Marcos. Yes. Pa Marcos. Marcos. <laughs> Wala. Are you know? Yes, no. Yes, no. yes, yes. Pangilinan. Yes. Samana Sam. Pimentel the third. Yes. Po. Yes. Recto. Yes. Revilla Jr. Yes, no, yes. Tolentino. Tolentino. Huh? Villanueva. Yeah, yeah yes. Villar. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> Zubiri. Oui, Madame Moselle. Yes. President Soto the third. Yes. Votes. No negative votes, no abstention. House Bill 8632 is approved on third reading. Mr. President. Just a manifestation. The leader is recognized, Senator Frank Leland. Yes, just a manifestation that I received a cop printed copy of the measures which were approved on third reading today, three days ago, or more than three days ago, in compliance with the constitutional requirement. And may I suggest that the record reflect that uh, all the senators received printed copies of the same uh, three day, more than three days ago in compliance with constitutional requirement. Thank you, Thank Mr. You, Mr. Former, former Majority Leader. Yes, former Mr. President. President. He just did my job for me. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> I was about to announce that uh, as well, Mr. President. But I was already a Minority Leader. That's why uh, I yes. reminded everybody he's a former yes. Majority Leader. <laughs> All copies were distributed, uh, Mr. President, March 10, 2021. Thank you, Mr. All President. Right. All right. For the record... For the record, right, majority leader. Again, thank you, minority leader. Mr. President, we have two bicameral conference committee reports for ratification. Congratulations to these uh, two very hardworking gentlemen. We'll start off uh, on the 
by Carmel Conference Committee on this, where receipt, Mr. President, of the report on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill Number 1513 and House Bill Number 4466. This is the Labor Education Act, Mr. President. I move that we recognize the chairperson of the Senate panel, Senator Joel Villanueva, to give the highlights of the bicameral report, Mr. President. Senator, um, uh, this is a bicameral conference committee report. No? Before I recognize yeah, correct, Senator Villanueva, I'm just very curious of um, how Senator Francis Tolentino feels, chairman of the Committee on Law and Government, after I heard that the, the plebiscite, the, the, the bill we passed on uh, Palawan was defeated. Senator Tolentino. Hmm? Senator Angarabam, ano nun? Ah, last Congress pa yun. Ah, I see. I I cannot admute, yes, Mr. President, I, I heard about that. Uh, lots of explanations, probably. Uh, lack of uh, proper information campaign due to the COVID. But then again, we have to respect the decision of uh, the people of Palawan. Uh, rejecting the division of the province into Palawan del Norte, Palawan del Sur, and Palawan Oriental. Yeah, apparently the people did not agree with Congress. <laughs> anyway, Senator Joey Villanueva, you are recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. President and distinguished colleagues, on behalf of the Senate panel to the Bicameral Conference Committee, on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill Number 1513 and House Bill Number 4466, or the Labor Education Bill, I have the honor to report to this August Chamber the Bicameral Conference uh, Committee report on the reconciled measure. But first of all, let me say that we are truly grateful to our counterparts in the House of Representatives, led by Congressman Mark Goh, for making the Senate version its working draft and adopting most of the uh, Senate provisions in the Reconciled Bill. Allow me also to thank our uh, leadership, our dear colleagues here, headed by our uh, very hardworking Senate President, Senate President Soto, Majority Leader Zubiri, Minority Leader uh, uh, Frank uh, Drilon, and all our uh, colleagues uh, who co-authored this measure, especially Senator Lapid, Senator Rebilia, and Senator Binay. Mr. President, Instead of uh, reading the joint explanation of this bicameral report, allow me to just present the highlights of the reconciled bill as endorsed by the bicameral conference committee and the joint explanation be inserted and considered read into the record of today's plenary. First, the bill recognizes the policy of the state to put in place a mechanism to educate future workers, future employers, and future entrepreneurs on their rights and responsibilities in promoting harmony in the workplace and social progress in the society. Second, the bill defines labor education as the teaching of basic knowledge on labor rights and other skills relating to negotiation, fostering smooth interpersonal relations in the workplace, and mechanisms for redress of grievances and other concerns. Third, it provides for the integration of labor education in tertiary education curriculum. For higher education, Mr. President, all public and private higher education institutions shall integrate labor education as part of an elective course. They are also encouraged to hold a labor empowerment and career guidance conference, which shall be attended by graduating students. For the TVET sector, the bill encourages the integration of labor education in short-term courses, whose duration is between one month to one year, while mandating the integration of labor education as an elective course for non-degree certificate and diploma courses ranging from one to three years. For the record, Mr. President, the BICAM bill integrates labor education not just in the basic competencies in TESDA's training regulations. The inclusion of non-degree diploma and certificate courses will make explicit the integration of labor integration in bundled TVET qualifications, such as the two-year automotive um, technology course, which consists of automotive servicing NC1, NC2, NC3, and the two-year culinary and food management services, which consists of bread and pastry production NC2, 
cookery, NC2, and food and beverage services, NC2 and 3, and commercial cooking, NC3. Our bill empowers CHED to develop the program that will be included in the policy standards and guidelines adopted and promulgated by the Commission. Similar to the powers given to CHED, the bill also mandates TESDA in partnership with DOLE to develop the appropriate modules of instructions and materials relating to labor education. This can be easily done, Mr. President, since the DOLE secretary serves as the chairperson of the TESDA board. With the aforesaid, Mr. President, I move for the adoption of the Bicameral Conference Committee report on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill No. 1513 and House Bill No. 4466 or the Labor Education Bill. Maraming salamat po, Ginoong Pangulo, at pagpalain tayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Sorry, the leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my apologies to our members who are raising their hand. Pag nag-screen share kasi, I cannot see anybody. There are only like four people on the screen. Apparently, Senator Angara, Mr. President, Senator Gordon, were raising their hand before Senator Joel. Can we just vote on this measure, Mr. President? And yes, then I'll recognize the yeah. gentleman. All right, um, all right. Let's do that. Well, I move, Mr. President, that we uh, approve and ratify the Bicameral Conference Committee report on the screen provisions of Senate Bill Number 1513 and House Bill Number 4466. And let the text of the joint explanation be inserted to the records of this chamber, Mr. President. So All right. Any objection? There being none, the Bicameral Conference Committee report is hereby ratified. All right. Majority Leader, who was, who was, uh, or who were rest? Senator, uh, Senator Gordon, Mr. President, and uh, I asked Native Senator Angara would still like to be recognized. All right, Senator uh, Richard Gordon is recognized. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President and Majority Floor Leader. Just a manifestation that we should tarry a little and really put in more mental gymnastics in approving uh, the creation of more provinces and more districts, Mr. President. Uh, what happened in Palawan, uh, although disturbing because it's a long, long province, uh, the stretch of which compares with Luzon, like Quezon, at times, Mr. President, when we do so, we must remember that we are slicing the pie uh, that will go to uh, uh, the provinces, and uh, sometimes it will go, uh, if they're sparsely populated, it will be unfair to the uh, heavily populated provinces. I'm not against uh, creating more provinces or districts for that matter. It's just that uh, we should really debate this because if it is approved, it was a herd. I'm just surprised why the people did not like it. Perhaps there were other reasons, such as accusations that could be unfair, or for that matter, there was even talk of that China uh, has already acquired a piece of property there uh, that would uh, be a mini base for them. Although that is uh, a social media talk, which is, I know, all noise, but nonetheless, uh, the, the manifestation is being done if only to allow us to have uh, Tarry a little, to tarry a little more before we approve all this. I know that this is a collegiate body. We all vote on it, but as far as I'm concerned, I would certainly think twice, think three times before we approve uh, provinces and districts. I know it's a political thing to do sometimes, but sometimes uh, the challenge of statesmanship and practicality must be observed. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and I hope I did not uh, hurt anybody. Thank you. No, there were um, um, manifestations made by Senator Sonia Gara through a text message. So, San Senator Gara, you're recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I was raising my hand earlier when you were asking for a response from uh, our local government uh, committee chair, uh, Senator Francis. But uh, yes, I was going to say, I was the chair when we passed that. And in fact, it was a very uh, hotly debated uh, uh, measure. And but it, it, it at the time it did seem to make sense because of uh, uh, I think governability was the main uh, uh, issue given that uh, Palawan is four times the size of Cebu in terms of land area, no. So, but uh, be that as it may, we must respect the will of the sovereign people, and in fact, uh, uh, that's that's my main point in uh, asking for the floor, Mr. President. That's why uh, I think the uh, drafters of our constitution, in their wisdom, recognize that these issues of uh, division or uh, seceding of a province or creation of a new province 
or uh, on your district are such uh, hotly debated issues that they are submitted uh, aside from uh, the votes of the delegates of the people, uh, the namely members of Congress, there is a second vote taken, and that is that of the people themselves. And uh, I was surprised, uh, I'd like to say, because I think, if I'm not mistaken, there were no negative votes on that uh, bill in the chamber. I, I could be wrong, no? Uh, well, Senator Risa might have been one of those. I see her raising her hand. But I remember there were also members uh, of on both sides of the aisle, Mr. President, who voted for that measure. But at, at the bottom line, again, is uh, uh, the people have spoken, and we must respect and honor that uh, exercise of sovereign will by the people. Uh, Mr. President, while I have the floor, may I also ask uh, for the leadership, Senate leadership, uh, by yours, by uh, by the presiding officer and uh, perhaps our majority and minority leaders, uh, just a procedural issue. I think when we, like in certain moments, I think because we, are, we have a new system uh, for our computer, I think there are times when we raise our hands, but we are not seen by the uh, presiding officer. I noticed this during the period of amendments in past bills. We were trying to raise our hand to be able to amend in a timely manner because, uh, as you know, we go chronologically through a bill and if we do not uh, raise it in a timely manner, in a way it is waived, no? although sometimes we go back. But just just, uh, just a small matter uh, to bring to attention and uh, we trust uh, in the judgment <clears throat> of the leadership, Mr. President. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We will look into that, uh, how the possibility of uh, solving that because the problem is when there is a shared screen. When Senator Villanueva was about to speak, uh, there was a shared screen already of his presentation, and we could not see who we could not see all of you. It was the shared screen that was on the computer. Anyway, going back to the issue, also yes, the framers of the Constitution, in fact, including the um, creation of cities, and um, do not fret. I have lost three cities in the Ninth Congress. I sponsored the cityhood of Santiago Isabela. We lost in the plebiscite. I also uh, sponsored the cityhood of um, uh, Ilagan, Isabela, and uh, lost in the plebiscite. Uh, the church was against the cityhood. Uh, they was they were thinking that uh, ibang magiging uh, resulta pag naging city mayon. But nevertheless, in the years to come, it uh, na rin after two or three congresses. No? And then the other one is in Novaliches. Uh, I uh, sponsored the cityhood of Nova Liches, separate from Quezon City and Caloocan, to become a city of its own because it's almost, it's bigger than Malabon, Nabotas, it's big and bigger than uh, San Juan, and uh, it has to be a city on its own. But uh, the problem is, in the, the framers of, Const of the Constitution placed uh, the, the fact that uh, when you vote for a, something, a plebiscite, all the affected areas need to vote. So when we were voting for the Nobaliches cityhood, it won in Nobaliches, but it lost in the first, the third, and the, the fourth of district city. of Quezon City. I only love Mawala in Nobaliches a city, so it really happens. Anyway, the for yes, just, may I add uh, to that, uh, Mr. 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 President? May I add to that? Uh, yes. Most recently, yes. yung natalo then for highly urbanized city was uh, in Nueva Ecija. Cabanatuan uh, lost also in the plebiscite. Uh, they wanted to be highly urbanized, not voting anymore with the province. And I believe the the Supreme Court ruled that uh, the whole province must decide on that. Kasi oh, 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 sila ng ira. So right. natalo, po yung, oh, natalo po yung highly urbanized uh, uh, city uh, bill ng Cabanatuan. Uh, pero, yung, pero yung bar, Mr. President, nanalo kasi si Majority Leader ang sponsor, yung bar. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dala, may dalang charm anyway. yun. May dalang charm. Minority, the, minority leader, the minority leader is recognized. Go ahead, Santo Drillo. Sasabay. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I don't think we have to lose sleep over uh, the fact that the people voted against the decision of Congress. This is how it works. This is how the system works. There are only very few instances when direct participation of the people is called upon in the Constitution. One of them is the creation of new local government units, uh, LGUs. And therefore, we submit, uh, this is submitted uh, to the people for uh, ratification and uh, the framers, even before this constitution, deemed it wise to have pe the people directly uh, participate and, uh, uh, and put their imprimatur 
on uh, the creation of new new local government units. We exercise our best judgment. The people did not agree with us. That's it, uh, Mr. President. That's how the system works. I wouldn't really, as I said, lose sleep. This is part of the system. And we should continue with the system because it's good for our democracy. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Yes, thank you. We concur. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, Majority Mr. Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. And just to end the discussion on that, we concur with Senator Franklin Drillon. I recall during the hearings when we asked the compliance in terms of uh, uh, documentation and, uh, of course, the, those who sponsored it from the, from Alawan, uh, there were no objections from the provincial board, no objections from the mayors, there were no objections uh, from the congressmen, and they're all in unison on this measure, like many measures that come to us. But eventually... It is the people who will decide will, for yeah. terms. Present. Yeah, which reminds me again, I, I forgot that one. I also sponsored the um, the two di the division of Isabela, Isabela del Norte and Isabela del Sur. We passed it. Rudy Albano, the old Rudy Albano was the sponsor in the House. I was sponsor in the Senate. We lost the plebiscite. <laughs> 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 anyway, that's, that's, it. Uh, that's, that's the that's beauty the of the plebiscite, Mr. President. Yeah, that's <laughs> the blue, beauty of the plebiscite. We ask the people directly. <laughs> so, Mr. President, uh, we have another BICAM report. I'm also one of the principal authors <coughs> of this, and it has something to do with our one of our dear colleagues, Senator Bato de la Rosa, our sponsor. Mr. President, we are in receipt of the bicameral conference committee report on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill Number 1563 and House Bill Number 8261. This is the PNP, BFP, BJMP, and BUCOR Height Equality Act, Mr. President. With the permission of the body, may we recognize the sponsor, our chairperson of the Senate panel, no other than Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, to sponsor the measures. Senator Ronald de la Rosa is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. President, on behalf of the Senate panel to the Bicameral Conference Committee, on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill number 1563 and House Bill number 8261, an act lowering the minimum height requirement for applicants of the Philippine National Police, Bureau of Fire Protection, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, and Bureau of Correction, amending Republic Act number 6975 as amended, Republic Act number 9263, and Republic Act number 10575 and for other purposes. I have the honor to report to the body the Bicameral Conference Committee report on the reconciled measure. Instead of reading the joint explanatory statement of the Bicameral Conference Committee report, may I be allowed to present the highlights of the reconciled bill and that the joint explanation be inserted and considered re read into the record. I would like to inform the body that the Senate version of the bill was adopted as the working draft. The version agreed upon by the Bicameral Conference Committee remained true to the objective of the bill passed in this chamber. We retained the uniform height requirement for the PNP applicants, including PNPA cadets, as stated in the Senate version of the bill. The PNP supported the Senate version and submitted the written objection on the version of the House of Representatives. The PNP stated that there is no cogent reason for cadets of the PNPA to be treated differently from other uniform members of the PNP with respect to height requirements since PNPA graduates perform the same functions and other police, as other police commission officers. The reconciled version of the bill also adopted the Senate version on the retention of the automatic waiver for members of the cultural minorities and indigenous people. The National Commission on Indigenous Peoples also put forward that the retention of said waiver is a significant step to address discrimination in the admission or appointment of uniformed personnel. Mr. President, in the eyes of our Creator, we are created equal. However, in the eyes of man, 
We are measured based on our appearance, capabilities, and talents. In the provisions of the law, we seek the furtherance of equity. This chamber can be a vehicle to limit or prohibit many things. But today, we have chosen to become a key in opening the gates of public service. We welcome those who may be less in height but possess the biggest of hearts for the service of the country. Gaya po ng aking naunang deklarasyon, hindi po natin binababa ang standard na kailangan para makapagsilbi bilang police, firefighter, jail officer, at correction officers. Nais po natin mabigyan ng pagkakataon makapagsilbi ang mga hindi nabiyayaan ng katangkaran. Courage, dedication, and willingness to sacrifice one's life for the service of the others cannot be measured by height nor by any physical characteristics given by the unseen hand of our supreme being. Once again, thank you for giving equal opportunity for those who have not been gifted the height to be a member of our uniformed personnel. I would like to express my gratitude to the members of the Senate panel for their contributions. Majority Floor Leader, Senator Mig Soberi, Senators Aimee Marcos, Senator Bongo, Senator Risa Montiveros, and Senator Tol Tolentino, who at one point in time supported the House Panel version that reinvigorated the House Panel's push for the adoption of their version, but were properly enlightened and convinced and uh, supported our Senate Panel version. Muli, maraming salamat po. Mr. President, I respectfully move that we approve the Conference Committee report on the disagreeing provisions of the Senate Bill Number 1563 and House Bill Number 8261 as submitted. Mr. President. George Leader. Yes, I concur with the motion of the good gentleman from Davao del Sur. I move that we approve and ratify the Bicarmel Conference Committee report on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill Number 1563 and House Bill Number 8261. Let the text of the joint explanation be inserted to our chamber's records, Mr. President. Thank you. Any objection? Hearing none, the Bicameral Conference Committee report is hereby ratified with a prayer that the, the, the President will not veto it like, like what the other President did. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, um, with that, Mr. President, Senator Nancy Bina can now be a police officer. <laughs> but I think she has a problem with her age limit, uh, Mr. Problem, Mr. President. Uh, anyway, uh, moving forward, Mr. President, uh, since today is Monday, since today is Monday, um, we'd like, uh, there is a colleague of ours who would like to avail of the privilege hour. Uh, may we recognize a distinguished colleague, Senator Risa Ontiveros, uh, Mr. President. Senator Risa Ontiveros is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader. Isang magandang hapon po sa ating lahat, Mr. President. I rise on a point of personal and collective privilege. Beware the Ides of March. Yan ang pamagat ng sikat na play ni Shakespeare tungkol sa assassination kay Julius Caesar. Mula noong maipalabas ang play na yan sa publiko noong 1500s, babala at pagbabantay ang kakabit ng pagpatak ng araw na ito. Ngunit, bago pa man ang pagamatay ni Julius Caesar, ang March 15 mismo ay kilala noong panahon ng mga Romano bilang araw ng pagbabayad ng mga utang. Sa makatuwid, alinsunod sa tradisyon, ito'y araw ng paniningil. Yan po ang nais nice kong gawin sa pagkakataong ito. Simula natin sa pagre-rewind ng mga pangunahing kaganapan mula 2020. Mag-time travel tayo ng kaunti. Nang pirmahan ni Presidente ang Proclamation No. 922 noong Marso na siyang nagde-declare ng State of Public Health Emergency sa bansa, ang mga kaso ng COVID-19 ay 24, dalawang dosena. Nabibilang pa sa pinakapayak na matematika at 
kayang-kaya pang habulin kung maayos sana ang programa ng pagtatrack and trace. More than a week later, the President signed Proclamation 929 declaring a state of calamity in the entire country for a period of six months. Exactly a year ago today, on this same day, March 15, 2020, we had 29 new cases, a total of 140 cases, and a death toll of 12. At this rate, Metro Manila was deep into the lockdown. Fast forward to today. Ngayon ay ang first year anniversary ng pagpataw ng enhanced community quarantine sa atin dito sa Luzon. Ngayon, ang mga kaso ng COVID nitong March 13 lamang ay nasa 5,000 kaso. That's the highest single tally in 2021 so far. Even in the age of disinformation and conspiracy theories, 5,000 days cases a day cuts through the noise. As they say, numbers don't lie. This brings the total of our cases to 616,611 and the total deaths to 12,766. All this despite one of the longest, strictest lockdowns in the world. Yan ba ang, pina- yan ba ang patunay sa sinasabi nila almost a week ago na excellent response? Yan ba ang sinasabi nila simula pa noong January na excellent performance? In Metro Manila alone, the reproduction number is currently at 186 according to Okta Research, adding that, quote, the Philippines might record up to 8,000 daily new COVID cases by the end of March and 18 to 20,000 by mid-April, close quote. Are these numbers worthy of patting ourselves on the back for? One year into the pandemic, they compare the Philippines to more advanced economies. They say we had have had fewer deaths. They say our population is not the same. Exactly. We are not the same. And those countries did not even have to impose severe, militaristic, and long lockdowns upon their peoples. If they insist on a gold star for for performance, how about the latest figures from the World Health Organization, which put the country in a very dismal position compared to all the other countries in the Western Pacific region. Kung ito ang tinutukoy nilang excellent, aba, dito, sa kategoryang ito, hindi maikakailang number one ang Pilipinas. Number one in total cases, number one in average daily cases, number one in number of deaths. Sa lagay na iyan, ay hindi pa kasali ang dagok ng COVID-19 sa ating ekonomiya. Una, sa kawalan ng trabaho, at least 4 million Filipinos were unemployed in January 2021 with an unemployment rate of 8.7%. That's one of our highest in 20 years. Ikalawa, ang pagbagal ng paglago ng ekonomiya. Our economic managers say that the economy contracted by 8.5 to 9.5% in 2020, plunging our country into recession. Ayon sa assessment ng ASEAN Focus noong September 2020, napakakupad ng pagtugon ng administrasyon sa malawakang epekto ng at pandemya. Dagdag pa nila, Naghigpit nga ang ating mga opisyal sa quarantine measures but, quote, later lifted restrictions prematurely, close quote. Napansin din ng report na ito ang kawalan ng kaayusan sa protocols at testing, pati na ang nakakadismayang pakikitungo sa mga OFWs na nawalan na nga ng trabaho sa ibang bansa ay pinahihirapan pa sa kanilang quarantine procedures paglapag sa Pilipinas. May pag-asa naman dahil nabigyan na ng emergency use authorization ang ilang COVID-19 vaccines. Ngunit delayed pa rin ang pagdating ng iba 
Dahil parang may kinikilingang brand ang administrasyon. Or maybe because somebody dropped the ball during the negotiation phase. Kahit sabihin natin nagsimula na ang pagbabakuna. The vaccines that are already here have not been rolled out fast enough. As of March 10, only 144,615 individuals have been vaccinated. Our own health secretary admitting that our vaccination rollout rate is not as quick as we wanted. And that's a quote from the secretary. I share the sentiment of our colleague, Sen Ping, who said that at the rate we are vaccinating, we can only finish inoculating 70 million of our kababayan by 2033. Wag naman po. At ngayong hindi na naman magkaintindihan ang mga opisyal kung paano ibababa ang bilang ng mga kaso ng COVID, babalik na naman sila sa parehong style nila noong 2020. Militarismo bilang tugon sa isang problemang pangkalusugan. Bakit ba mga pulis natin na nakafatigs at may hawak na baril ang kailangang manaway sa mga tao para magsuot ng mask, mag-face shield at mag-physical distancing? Yung pinagdadaanan ng ating mga kababayan sa kamay ng batas, ibang-iba sa pinagdaraanan ng ating Chief PNP na last year, nakapagmanyanita pa, who last week skipped health screening in Calapan City at ngayon positive pala para sa COVID. Of course, sana gumaling siya agad at tinex ko po iyan sa kanyang student president. Napakarami ng mga pagkakataon na inabuso ng ilang pulis at maging ng ilang mga local government officials ang kanilang kapangyarihan sa ngalan umano ng pagpapatupad ng health protocols. Ilan sa mga masasamang ulat ay ang paglapastangan sa karapatan ng dalawang menor de edad sa Nai, Cavite, na isang oras na pinahiga pa sa Ataul bilang parusa. Sa Santa Cruz, Laguna naman, may limang menor de edad na pinagsiksikan at kinulong sa dog cage dahil lang lumampas sa curfew. Bakit kailangang tipunin pa ang mga tao at pagdikit-dikitan sa isang lugar kung ang paraan para maiwasan ang COVID ay maghiwa-hiwalay at dumistansya? Pag-isipan naman sana natin ang ating mga ginagawang patakaran. Hindi law enforcement response ang magiging gamot sa isang public health emergency. Gaya ng nasabi ko na noon, iwanan na natin ang naratibo na pasaway ang ating mga kababayan. Pagkatiwalaan natin ang ambag nila sa isang community-based, promotive, preventive, and protective response sa COVID-19. Bigyan natin ng pagkakataon ang kapwa nating Pilipino to do their share in this fight. Hindi naman natin sinasabing madali lang labanan ang COVID-19. Pero hindi rin naman kaila sa ating lahat ang matagal na at paulit-ulit na samo ng World Health Organization para mapababa ang mga kaso. Test, trace, isolate, and treat. Yan ang naglagay sa Vietnam at sa New Zealand sa safe zone bago pa man dumating ang mga bakuna. Matagal na tayo nasabihan to push harder and work harder dahil anumang pagkaantala, anumang pagpapaliban ay katumbas ng mas mahirap na pagpapatigil sa pagkalat ng virus. Kaya narito tayo ngayon, isang taon na ang nakalipas, wala pa rin unified contact tracing system. Kailangan natin ng tulong ng ating mga mamamayan mga registered at accredited people's organizations at civil society organizations to complement local epidemiological and surveillance units. Pagtutulungan ang magiging susi sa mas maayos na data analysis at response. Data is the way to a new and better normal. Data is also the way to accountability. Tulad na lang ng mga, ng mga numero Tungkol sa napakataas na preso ng mga PPEs at testing kits 
na ibinunyag rin natin dito noong nakaraang taon. Kung susuriin natin ang report ng DOH, bumili sila ng isang milyong set ng PPEs sa halagang 1.8 billion pesos. Kung saan bawat set ay pumapatak sa 1,800 pesos, halos doble na ng presyo ng pinakamahal na PPE. Pero matatandaan din natin na ayon kay Senting, doble ang halaga na kumpara sa mga pribadong organisasyon. Ayon pa nga kay Sen. Grace, mula 400 pesos hanggang 1,000 pesos ang presyo ng isang set ng PPE sa merkado. Isa pang revelasyon ni Sen. Ping, yung binili ng gobyerno na nucleic acid extractors para sa COVID testing umabot sa 4 million pesos. Pero yung Project ARC, nakabili ng parehong unit sa presyong 1.75 million pesos. Yung swabbing system, mayroon ding pagdodoble ng price tag. Kung ang pribadong sektor nakabili sa halagang $16 per unit, ang gobyerno gumastos ng $32 kada isa. This is why I also filed a resolution urging COA to conduct a special audit on how funds for the COVID-19 response have been spent. I hope this doesn't happen with our COVID vaccines and related collaterals kung saan ang perang nakalaan ay inutang pa natin. We cannot be reckless with the more than $14 billion worth of loans. That's equivalent to about $690 billion pesos that the Filipino people would have for generations to come. We deserve to know what every centavo was spent on. And that every centavo is truly used for our health protection recovery. It's for this reason that I am urging the DOH to set up a vaccine tracker to apprise everyone the progress of our vaccination efforts. Dapat alam na mga Pilipino kung ano, ilan, magkano, at kanino mapupunta ang mga pinili pipilihing vaccines. My dear colleagues. This is why we need better data analytics and information management. Malinis, matapat, maaasahan at napapanahong datos at impormasyon sa gagamitin para sa maayos na pagkapasya at pagbuo ng mga epektibong polisiya. This is also why, Mr. President, if we were to give an excellent mark, it would not be to the administration's handling of the public health crisis, but to all medical frontliners who have been in the forefront of this fight despite tremendous sacrifices on their end, especially during times when even their basic personal protective equipment were lacking. We commend them for holding the line of our health system capacity and for making sure that the healthcare system remains afloat. The same excellent mark should be given to essential workers who, despite difficulties in transportation, workspace arrangements, and the threat of being exposed to the virus, soldiered on so that basic goods and services will continue to be received by the rest of us. Lastly, Mr. President, we should commend our local government units and the private sector for taking proactive leadership roles and initiatives. Quite often during this pandemic, it is our LGUs who have stepped up to make up for the deficiencies of our national government. LGUs, along with the private sector, filled in the gaps or whenever the national government seems to be acting in slow motion. Mr. President, ako po'y naniniwalang we will get through this health crisis despite the enormity of the, of the challenge because of the best efforts being exerted by our national and local health authorities that despite working within a weak and fragmented health system and facing immense pressures on all fronts, we acknowledge their work and thank them for not giving up and for continuing the fight. But just like in any fight, We need inspirational and innovative leaders who will rally and tell us the real score and not blindside us with self-made assessments seemingly drawn from thin air that guide us away from the real picture.
If we are a real team, we need our leaders to step up and employ the whole of society approach to the crisis, especially as we begin to roll out and expand COVID-19 vaccination. COVID-19 is a health problem. That was the case in 2020, and that has not changed only because 365 days have passed. This virus is not going away just because you brandish a gun, just as it will not stop spreading because there are officers in fatigues at a checkpoint. As I've already said before, it is our health professionals and scientists who need the widest berth. It is our development workers, our communities, our LGUs that need a boost in resources so they are not left to their own devices. And now that we have the looming threat of new variants, we are all hoping fervently and ardently that we don't spend another year stuck in a time loop. There's a year of lessons here just waiting to be learned and applied to our policies. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, let us beware the Ides of March. In the Filipino spirit of Bayanihan, this time around, let us hope government is more proactive in doing it right. We all know we can still do better in this fight. Ipakita natin sa Asia at sa buong mundo. Ipangako natin ngayong mismong araw ng paniningil na sa ibang paraan naman natin sukatin ang ating pagtugon sa hamon ng COVID ngayong 2021. Kapit kamay at walang iwanan sa ere na narito tayong lahat para sa isa't isa. Salamat po, Mr. President. Jordi Lida. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, I move that the speech of the lady senator, may ask for one minute. So may, I, may we ask the lady senator where she would like her speech to be referred to us? It had covered several topics, uh, Mr. President. Uh, obviously, Committee on Health, if I may suggest. Hopefully, it will be taken up in the Committee on Health uh, as soon as possible, <laughs> Mr. President. I move that the speech of the lady senator be placed in the Committee oh, on Health. Uh, Any uh, comments, Senator Drillon, uh, Mr. President? Um, I think my, no, no, Senator Caetano is uh, seeking the floor. Uh, senator Pia Caetano, you're recognized. Mr. President, uh, in the committee that uh, will be chaired by Senator Angara again to take up a simple resolution that will be expanded to many pages. Hmm. <laughs> no, no, he, he's, uh, no, he's the, <laughs> he disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> moving forward, Mr. President, moving forward. Right, Thank so you. We, can we um, entertain the motion to uh, refer to the yes. Committee on Health? Yes, Mr. President, I move that we uh, that this, the speech of the gentle lady senator be referred to the Committee on Health, Mr. President. Any objection? Chair is done. Sorry for... Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, we do have a resolution that we asked uh, uh, our uh, secretary to prepare, and it's a very important resolution, Mr. President. This is the resolution on the pork issue. So, Mr. President, I move that we consider uh, these two resolutions on the table, Mr. President. Uh, PS Resolution Number 676, taking in consideration Senate Resolution Number 684. I so move, Mr. President. 676, 684. Any objection? Eating none. Consideration is in order. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before we ask the Secretary to uh, read the title of the measure, just a little bit of a background. PS Resolution Number 676 was authored by Senator uh, Francis Kiko Pangilinan, and to also tackle the issue on the importation of uh, uh, pork, we decided to come up with a joint, sort of like a, a, it's a resolution, Mr. President, joining the two topics uh, together. And that's why we have PS Resolution Number 684 signed by almost all members of the Senate. So we'd like to ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure, Mr. President. Uh, so you're talking about 676 then? Yes, Mr. President, that being the that being the primary resolution, and then we will have to move for substitution to 684, Mr. President. Ah, okay. The PS resolution 676 was already read into the records last session. Uh, perhaps you would want uh, 684 to be read also? 
Yes, Mr. President, that is correct. All right, so let's, um, let's have the PS Resolution 684. PS Resolution number 684, Resolution Expressing the Sense of the Senate to Persuade the Chief Executive, His Excellency Rodrigo Roa Duterte, to disapprove the recommendation of the Department of Agriculture to lower the tariff rates tariff rates on and to increase the minimum access volume of imported pork products and to urge the Department of Agriculture to recommend to the President that a state of national calamity be declared due to the severe impact of African swine fever on the swine industry. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Right. President. We'd like to recognize uh, Senator Pangininan being the principal author if would like to come up with um, opening remarks. Uh, in support of Senator Pangilina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, we uh, have no objection to uh, incorporating this resolution together with uh, the resolution we filed last Wednesday. Uh, and therefore, uh, well, uh, we would like to, we hope that uh, we can move to approve Senate Resolution 676 taking into consideration uh, Senate Resolution 8664. Uh, eight, 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 perhaps, uh, Majority Leader, if I may re recommend, no, that uh, the text of uh, PS Resolution 684 be incorporated into 676. That is correct. The, considering that is the fact correct, that it is, uh, it, is, uh, it is complete. Yes, Mr. Uh, no. President. Actually, it complements, the, text it, complements of, the yes. it complements the resolution of uh, Senator Pangilinan. That of is course, correct, Mr. Because, President. Because uh, he is the principal author of six seven six, then uh, six eight four. He will be the the first introducer. Yes, Mr. President. Truly and so on. Yes, Mr. President. That is absolutely that is correct. Uh, with the permission of the body, I so mm. move I so that we adopt that as the primary resolution, Mr. President. All right, we take the number of 676, we incorporate 684 into the into the text of the entire 676, including the correct. title of 684. Any objection? Chair, here's none. So, so um, adopted. Now, let's uh, Mr. President, consider the uh, resolution. Yes. Mr. President, we, uh, we have a colleague. Yes. Senator Lachson is, is uh, seeking the floor. Senator Zabiri, if you don't mind. Yes, Senator Ping Lachson is recognized. I manifested earlier, uh, informally for the session, uh, that I'd like to uh, ask some questions in connection with the uh, proposed Senate resolution, Mr. President, if I may be allowed. Of course, uh, yes, by the yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, to, to keep it no, uh, orderly. Yes. Wait. Yes. Mr. Mr. President, uh, is, he has the floor. He is. He wants to uh, ask questions. Yes, Mr. President, but we who will the, so, the question is who will answer. That's why I want to put on the floor, Lang, who will answer. Um, okay. Since the issue, Mr. President, possibly on uh, the national calamity, the state of calamity, we can ask Senator Kiko to answer that. And for the issue on the MAV and importation, maybe we can ask the, the chairperson of the Committee on Agriculture, Senator Villar, to answer his questions, uh, Mr. President. So that's what I wanted to put on record. Thank you. All right. So um, we give the floor to Senator Lachson. Either go ahead or both. Uh, the chairperson of the Committee on Agriculture uh, or Senator Kiko my my uh, answer the questions, Mr. President. All right. Anyway, first let me manifest full support for the adoption of the proposed Senate resolution, and I would like to take the opportunity to also thank the men or the uh, colleague from the other side of the aisle. Senator Kiko Pangilin, and for delivering the speech you know, on this uh, very important and time. Having said that, Mr. President, this thing is sponsored of them. Yield to some. Yes, uh, we, uh, we, there, your, uh, your signal is uh, coming in and out, uh, Senator Lasson. I hope you can try to check on the. My internet anyway. connection is. Great, Mr. President. Yes, go ahead. I now have, continue. Uh, yeah, you, you're you doing now. Okay. Yeah. You're doing fine. Go ahead. Mr. President. 
anyway, anyway, yeah. My first question, Mr. President, uh, which office in particular under the under Department of Culture is in charge of the MAV and all related activities like awarding of the quotas to which importers of, of pork, uh, etc., Mr. President? Senator Pangilinan. Go ahead. I, I think uh, I would rather uh, uh, defer to uh, the chairperson of the Committee on Agriculture uh, as uh, this is the aspect that she wanted to introduce in today's uh, deliberations, uh, Mr. President. All right. Senator Villar is recognized. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to think that everything is under the Bureau of Animal Industry. And of course... <laughs> Uh, the, there, there is, is the National Meat Inspection Service. There are, there are the two uh, agencies in the uh, in the uh, bureau, in the Department of Agriculture who are which are prominent in importation and development of the industry. And sometimes we're confused who are in charge of giving this uh, 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 import permit. Uh, so I would like to think that it's the under the Bureau of Animal Industry, the related agencies under the Bureau of Animal Industry. These two agencies under the DA are members of the so-called MAV Management Committee or Council, Mr. President. Yeah, I think so. Who is in charge of the MAV Management Committee? I think in the end, it's the it's the Secretary of Agriculture because they cannot uh, they cannot do anything without the approval of the Secretary of Agriculture. So whatever they do, uh, in the end, it's the Secretary of Agriculture who is responsible for this. I, I agree, but uh, uh, we have what we call an office of primarily primary responsibility under the DA. And I believe that office is the MAV Management Committee headed by a certain USEC or ASEC, William C. Medrano. Have you heard? Uh, uh, yeah, about, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's acting USEC for hog importation, as a matter of fact, Mr. President. So they always change people, eh? so I don't bother to learn who are in charge. But I, I feel I the the one responsible will be the Secretary of Agriculture. They always change people there. Sometimes you cannot follow up now how they are changing positions. Ultimately responsible, Mr. President. But there's yeah. a person in charge and he is Assistant Secretary who is acting under Secretary for Hub Importation. Anyway, Mr. President, I agree that uh, two agencies under the DA are uh, participants or members of the MAV Management Committee. And these are the Bureau of Animal Industry and the M N NMIS, the National Meat Inspection Service, whose executive director is also an OIC, you know, Dr. Josephine yeah. Salvador. Yeah, that's the now, problem. That's why you notice when I make bills for agriculture, I choose not the agency which will implement. Because <laughs> it's so hard. Uh, because they're always changing people, they're always changing agency. It's so hard to to find who is responsible for what's happening. So just like when I wrote that uh, rice competitiveness enhancement fund and the Coco Levy fund, I I put the I, I indicate the agency uh, which will be responsible. Because it's so hard to find who is responsible. So uh, that is better. But right now, I don't bother na sa DA. Ang gulo-gulo nila. May OIC, mayroong head, tapos may OIC, may ganon. I'm confused. Just like you, I'm confused also. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. President, I ask those questions uh, simply because I'd like to find out if they have been asked to provide the Senate with the complete details or data on the number of quotas so far allocated, you know, as well as the names of importers awarded the quotas, including their corresponding volumes of hog importations as of their latest record. Kung naitanong ba natin ito during any of our committee hearings, 
And that's the reason why I asked for the names and the offices or office or offices uh, concerned, Mr. President, because my succeeding questions will be in relation to to uh, my my earlier questions, Mr. President. Uh, uh, when I do, uh, Mr. President, when I do hearing on on uh, things, maybe I'm different. I work on the principle not on with regards to the people. I believe that the, if the principle of doing things is okay, then everything else will follow. So I never uh, ask these questions, but if our, uh, our uh, good senator from Cavite would like to get those data, I will ask them to submit it to you. What I... I I, I studied in this hearing is the principle of whether uh, uh, founded by yung mag increase ng MAV, whether uh, the importers are making money with the present tariff or they will lose money if we we continue with the present tariff or not. Uh, those are the things I I know. I don't deal with uh, personal. Things like the list of people. I don't care about the list of people as long as the principle is okay. Then whoever they are, they just follow what is in the law. In my case, Mr. President, we're dealing here with money, public money, and possible for gun revenues. That's why I'm asking these questions. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. But if you, uh, Mr. President, if our good senator from Cavite would want like that, something like that, I'll ask them to produce those uh, lists for you, especially. I will do that uh, after this. Uh, not for me, especially, but for the whole Senate, Mr. President. Yeah, yeah. I will ask them to provide all the senators the list. Okay, so you would uh, know them. Okay. So you would know who are benefiting from these uh, policies. Unless uh, Secretary K uh, rather Senator Kiko knows better. <laughs> I give the floor to Senator Kiko. Go ahead, Mr. President, uh, for Senator Kiko. If uh, Senator 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 yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, I remember raising this quest same question uh, 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 to the distinguished uh, gentleman from Cavite. Uh, and Mr. President, we raised this uh, question in the first hearing, and uh, they submitted the the Department of Agriculture submitted the list of the volumes imported, the names of the importers uh, for both uh, chicken and pork. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if they submitted it to the committee, but uh, this was the it was my uh, by way of my representation that uh, uh, the question was raised and the documents were turned over. So you have here uh, a long list uh, uh, and the volumes, uh, the names, uh, the items, uh, uh, the items imported, and the total for both chicken and uh, pork, uh, Mr. President. We can uh, turn this over to uh, senator. The, uh, the senator from Cavite, if uh, and the others. Happens. Yes, uh, and the others. Thank you. I was about to say uh, that without casting aspersions on the integrity of the officials that I mentioned, Mr. President. Nevertheless, I received this uh, some disturbing information from a highly placed source you know, who has knowledge of the modus operandi within the agency that at present rates of 30% tariff for in quota hug importation and 40% for off quota importation. Meron ng umiiral na kalakaran na tompats or SOP of 5 to 7 pesos per kilo. And since, as per the computations mentioned in the draft resolution, sufficient na rin yung profit margin uh, based on uh -huh. the current and local prices of pork, then I'd like to pursue this, uh, this issue, Mr. President. Now, to illustrate, you know, and uh, this based on uh, some quick uh, 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 that would include okay, seven days stay cost of cold storage facility per container and then 15% importer or importers mark up and another 15% retail margin. Now, if they're selling based on price indicated in the resolution at 284 pesos 
for centavos. That's a profit of 44 pesos and 64 uh, centavos per kilogram or an 18.5 profit margin. Now, right now, based on the canvas that we uh, did, my staff did ano, on pork prices, yung pork nagbebenta sa 270 to 300. So, mm. sa 270, it's 29 pesos and 99 centavos per kilogram or a profit margin of 12.5. Kung susundin natin yung canvas price na 270 pesos. Now, I believe that Senator Kiko he still has uh, some contacts inside the department. So I asked, have you heard the same or similar information uh, on this, Mr. President? I'm asking uh, Senator Kiko because he came from the same department in his capacity as a presidential advisor. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for that question, uh, uh, Senator Lakson, uh, the distinguished gentleman from Cavite. That's precisely why I asked uh, for the volumes and the uh, names of the, uh, of the importers for chicken and pork uh, and the list uh, so that we could look into it and precisely check if uh, what has been a modus operandi, and we've been hearing this too, na ilan-ilan lang yan, uh, uh, paikot-ikot lang sa isang grupo ang nabibigyan. Uh, this is the allegation, of course. Uh, nabibigyan ng uh, uh, permits to be able to import. And just to pursue the point raised earlier by Senator Lacson, based on his computations, we also have computations and it was manifested precisely by one of the meat importers who's meat, who is importing temporarily. Uh, this is the pro pork coalition. Uh, they are really local hog racers. And he said, kahit na 10% lang ang markup, malaki na ang kinikita ng mga importer at 40% or 30% tariff. So you can imagine if we bring it down to 5% or 10%, they will be swimming in billions of pesos of profit, uh, Mr. President. And that is precisely why dapat bantayan. Mr. President, I, I'm going to... In that connection, uh, I want to make a manifestation, uh, yeah, Senator Lacson, with your permission. May I just pursue that point before okay, I forget? Okay, uh, okay, okay. Thank you. And to Thank you. you. That's why this proposed Senate resolution is very important and very timely. Ito po yung aking uh, uh, sasabihin, ano? Kung babawasan pa natin ang tariff, both on in quota and off quota importations, from 30% to 5% and 40% to 15% respectively, lalong lalaki pa yung profit margin. Would you agree, uh, Mr. President? Of course, it goes without saying, hindi ba? Kasi binawasan yung tariff eh. From 30 to 5 for in quota and 40 to 15 for off quota. So, lalaki yung profit margin. I just want so, to make a manifestation in that connection. I yield to the uh, lady from Las Piñas. Yes. You know, uh, uh, the D Department of Agriculture said that we are going to import uh, projection on importation. That's the demand minus the supply. Uh, there will be an importation of 388,000 metric tons. But... From the record of the customs, 70% of the importation are offal. And according to our tariff law, offal has 5 to 10% tariff already. So there is really no need to decrease the tariff because there is really a low tariff for offal and that is 70% of our importation. 30% lang yung nasa MAV. That's why uh, I told Senator Subiri that I would like to uh, detach this uh, this in in our ano in our resolution uh, number eleven to uh, lines eleven to twenty two because uh, because uh, it's not true. We are not collecting this kind of tariff because according to our tariff law already being implemented, uh, 
5 to 10 percent lang ang offal at ang importation natin 70 percent are offal and only 30 percent are good meat. Yun lang ang uh, magbabayad ng 30 to 40 percent yung 30 percent at yung 70 percent talagang opal na yun 5 to 10 percent lang yun. On the average sabi nila 7 kasi merong 5, may 10, 7 percent. So in effect even if we don't decrease the tariff the tariff is low already. That's why uh, we don't really get a lot of uh, uh, tariff income from them. Parang yung nabasa ko dito, mga uh, 4, bi 4 billion a month, a year lang ang tariff income natin. Kasi yung 70%, mura na ang tariff. Yung 30% lang ang 30 to 40. And that's uh, 30% for the 54,000. And then for the 62,000, kasi ang 30% ng 388,000 is la something like 120,000 metric tons. So yun lang ang met 30 to 14 tariff. Yung uh, 200, uh, yung opal is something like uh, 200. Uh, 80, uh, 70 percent of 388 is 256, something like that. So, parang sa akin, there is no argument that we will not decrease tariff because it's low already. 70 percent is uh, 5 to 8 percent, uh, 5 uh, something like on the average 7 percent. Ngayon, tatanungin mo na lang kung yung opal, talagang opal yun. <laughs> but that's, uh, wala na tayong magagawa doon. Talaga yun ang declare nilang opal at 30 percent lang ang good meat. So, maganda na sa kanila tong ating sistema ngayon that there's no need to decrease. Kaya nga, tinawagan ko ang DOF because I kept on reading and reading and I found out that 70% of our importation are offal with a tariff of 5 to 10%, on the average 7%. So why do we have to decrease the, ta the tariff? Yes, uh, Senator Kiko. Yes, I absolutely. Give the floor to Senator Kiko. There is no disagreement. That's why we're pursuing to adopt this resolution. Na hindi kailangan yes. na mag tariff. Oh. Hindi rin siguro kote yung pag-increase ng kota. Anyway, Mr. President, as I was saying earlier, no, kung mag-reduce tayo ng tariff, aside from the foregone conclusion, siyempre, lalaki yung profit margin. And, kung merong existing uh, uh, SOP, so itong parts na under the uh, present uh, system, ano, under the present tariff or rates, kung meron ng SOP 5 pesos to 7 pesos per kilo, it's Logical to natataas din yung tongpats kasi natataas yung profit eh. So if and if simultaneously with the reduction of tariffs, yakyat naman yung volume from 54,000 metric tons to something like 400,000 metric tons. Bukot sa malaki ang maging foregone revenues, Mr. President. On the other hand, the resultant effect is a tremendous increase in the SOP, in the tongue parts. Is, isn't that another logical conclusion, Mr. President? Uh, I'll ask uh, Senator Kiko to answer. Uh, gentleman from uh, Cavite, Th that is correct. That is precisely why we want to pursue uh, looking into the people behind uh, the importers, uh, the board of directors, uh, the uh, track record, uh, their paid, paid up capital, uh, how much they are going to be importing, uh, and the like. And that's why we asked it. And just to give a sense to our colleagues, as well as the uh, gentleman from the Cavite, uh, if the a trip dollars landed cost uh, per kilo, yeah. Yeah, yes. right. that is $1.2 billion at 400,000 metric tons or 400 million kilos. That is $1.2 billion landed cost. Pag nilagyan mo ng 40 pesos per kilo yun, hindi yun ba? That is actually, in pesos, that's 57.6 billion pesos already. Landed cost of 400,000 metric tons. Ang laki ng kikitain dito. Kung talagang ganito kalaki ang pinapayagang ma-import at ipababa pa ang uh, taripa 
bilyon-bilyong halaga ang kita rito. Somebody or some group or some sector will be making a killing in terms of profits because of this policy. And that's why, is it the right policy? Do we flood uh, and lower at the same time uh, the tariffs, uh, uh, Mr. President? Kaya nga nagtataka kami, bakit pilit na pinapalaki ng uh, napakalaki? Oo, may shortage. Oo, mayroong kakulangan ng supply. Pero tama ba na ganitong kalaki ang ilala- ipapasok natin para ma-address yung shortage? Eh baka mangyari yung nangyayari sa rice na binuhos ng uh, ang, uh, ating bansa ng imported rice pero uh, bumaba nga ang presyo ng bigas pero hindi kasing baba nung nararapat sana. So saan pumunta? yung tong din well, that yung uh, pinatong na halaga para inaipasok yung ganung klase kalaking halaga ng bigas exactly the point that I'm pursuing Mr. President uh, this is uh, colleague ano in fact ito yung uh, counting computation ano uh, ito logical kasi uh, proportion proportion yung pigo sa natin ano? Mr. President at 400,000 metric tons or equivalent to 400 million kilos or 4 million kilos, 4 million. So, 400 million, ah. 4 million. Yeah, 4 million. Times 1,000. 4 billion. 1,000. Yeah. Tatlong zero. Tatlong zero. 400 million. 400 million. Mm. Ito, nakakalala, President. Kung merong existing na 5 pesos to 7 pesos per kilo na tongpats, ito galing to sa loob, ah. Hindi ito, hindi ito invento. Galing sa inside information na umiiral na kalakaran. At kung sabihin na lang natin nagdoble yung patong, no? yung 5 pesos, in 10 to 15 pesos ngayon ng patong, you can just imagine <laughs> yung kikitain ng sindikato dito. Uh, yeah, times 10. So, sa 4 million na lang, times 10, o oh, 400 million times 10, that's easily 4 billion pesos. Ito yung SOP. At kung uh, 15 pesos ang uh, ang dadagdag kasi 5 to 7 eh. Kung 5 magiging 10, kung 7 magiging 14 or 15. Sabi natin 15. Hindi eh, easily 60 billion pesos. 6 billion pesos ang kikitain ng mga masuswerte ron sa uh, That's why Mr. President at the proper time during the period of amendments if I may be allowed I will propose a couple of amendments. And this uh, deals with uh, the issues that I have raised earlier. Uh, at the proper time, uh, gusto ko manawagan sa PACC to conduct a moto proprio uh, investigation to find out kung uh, totoo ba na existing yung uh, at, at current uh, tariffs and uh, tariff rates. Existing na ba yung at sa volume, 54,000 metric tons. Kung meron 5 to 7 na uh, pesos, dapat alamin natin ito kasi kaya siguro nagpipilit na ibaba yung tariff at itaas yung volume. Kasi katakot-takot, sabi nga ni Senator Kiko kanina, talagang baka meron namang uh, laughing all the way to the bank while uh, again, yung revenues natin will suffer and at the same time, Eh, mamamatay yung mga hug racers natin, yung local hug racers. So, we have really to strike a balance bit and, and find out, get to the bottom of all these moves, you know. And uh, sabi ko, very timely and very important that we adapt this resolution and uh, inform the president of the possible dire consequences on the foregone revenue side and at the same time on the uh, corruption uh, issue, Mr. President. So at the proper time, I would like to propose uh, a couple of amendments, one in the whereas clause, in the, under the whereas clause, and the other the uh, resolutory clause. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, I yield to Senator Villar. Senator Villar. I just yes, want to right. make a, to make a manifestation that uh, the foregone income is too high. Because really, uh, out of the 388 that we are, thousand metric tons that we are importing, 70% are offal. Maliit na yung 
tariff sa OFAL, 5 to 10 percent, on the average 7 percent. Kaya hindi ganun kalaki. Yung 126 lang, ang uh, 116 lang ang good meat, yun yung mataas ang tariff. Kaya in terms of income for the government, maliit lang. 4 billion nga lang a year. Kasi nga, yung 276, kinlasify na nilang OFAL, mahina ang tariff nun. On the average, 7 percent lang yon. So maliit lang 'yon. So yung natitira lang na mataas ang tariff is the 116,000 based on 388. So 'yun lang ang 30 to 40% ang tariff. Kaya parang hindi na worthwhile ibaba kasi konti lang 'yon. <laughs> konti lang 'yon. Wala wala ring masyadong foregone income. Talaga lang na mura na rin ang tariff for uh, for hog importation talaga. And uh, I think the the problem is they declare yung good meat as offal, kaya mura na rin ang tariff nila. Yes. Uh, we not the of the uh, uh, committee uh, chairperson and uh, our colleagues. Uh, ano nga uli ibig sabihin ng offal? Mas mura yun eh, yung mga laman loob, mga ah. pangit na, lam- na part ng uh, hag. Yung good meat, yun yung mga talagang magaganda yung uh, uh, ano tawag doon yung mga na- chop, nice cut chop. o yung mga nice cut yung opal yun yung yung mga pang <laughs> mga paa <laughs> mga tenga mga ulo mga ganoon something like that basta yung pangit opal so yun 7% lang ang tarif noon pero pwede mo rin namang kung kaasabuat mo yung nag yung yung ano inspector pwede mo sabihin yung good meat opal and pay 7%. Yun na nga ba sinasabi ko na hindi na kailangan ibaba ang tarif. Mababa na kasi 7% na for the 70% of our import. 30% na lang ang good meat. So Yes. There is no foregone income. Talaga mababa na rin ang tariff. Kaya parang okay. useless to. Yes, yes, uh, Senator King. The Commission of the uh, uh, Chairperson of the Committee on uh, Agriculture and uh, uh, Senator Lacson. Uh, uh, just very quickly, uh, yan din ang isa pang source of corruption. Uh, Ayun na nga, yung, uh, mas malaki yun. Yung, uh, yung uh, misdeclaration at uh, hindi magagawa yan kung... Uh, Uh, na binabantayan ng bay ng Bureau of Animal Industry kung binabaya, binabantayan ng customs <laughs> at least of at least five uh, importers na merong quota and this is only for the port of Manila I yes. will share the, uh, the list with the and uh, if I may aside from adopting a resolution siguro uh, maybe it is proper also for this and it as a committee of the whole to conduct investigation precisely on that particular issue raised by Senator Kiko. Because sobra na kasi itong uh, nangyayari na may pandemia, nasa naman yung konsensya ng mga tao na in the middle of a pandemic, 
tapos may Asian swine flu pa tayo, makakaisip pa ba naman ng kikita ng uh, billion? Di ba marapat lamang? Anyway, uh, just to summarize, ano? again, I'd like to uh, state for the record na pagdating ng period of amendments, I'm going to introduce my uh, proposed amendments. Thank you, Mr. President. That's all for my interpolation. All right, uh, Senator Ontiveros is uh, seeking the floor unless uh, majority Thank leader. Yes. Thank you, uh, yes. Mr. President. If I may, uh, just for the record, a brief manifestation by way of requesting the authors to be made a co-author uh, of these resolutions. Salamat, uh, Mr. President. After consultations with the affected backyard and commercial hog racers, including the meat vendors, I agree uh, with the authors that the proposal of tariff reduction and increase in the minimum access volume will result in an estimated foregone government revenue of 19.786 billion pesos, which could otherwise be used to assist the domestic hog industry to recover from African swine fever and the COVID-19 pandemic. Assistance is badly needed at this point when the impact of devastation is deep and widespread and the projection of recovery is that it will take several years. I also support the declaration of a state of calamity throughout the Philippines to provide the government, the DA, and the LGUs, and other concerned agencies the needed fiscal space and ample latitude to utilize appropriate funds, including the Quick Response Fund and other funds that may be declared savings and used to immediately respond to the outbreak and pursue effective programs on recovery, such as border controls, farm biosafety measures, and an increase in insurance coverage to encourage repopulation. Patong-patong na po ang uh, paghihirap ng ating mga mamamayan dahil sa epekto ng COVID. Ang paggalugi ng ating industriya ng mga magbababoy, lalo na yung mga maliliit na magbababoy dahil sa African swine fever ay talagang nakadagdag pa. Huwag nating hayaang maubos ang kabuhayan at tuluyan na hindi makabangon. So once more, Mr. President, with a request to the good authors to include me as a co-author, salamat po, Mr. President. Mr. President, may we also recognize Senator Joel Villanueva for manifestation. Senator Joel Villanueva is recognized. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Floor Leader. Mr. President, just a short manifestation. Uh, July 2019, yun po yung unang uh, naitala ng Department of uh, Agriculture, ang unang African fe swine fever outbreak sa Pilipinas. Magdadalawang taon na po ito, uh, ginoong Pangulo, itong problema ng uh, ating uh, swine industry. Mas mahaba pa po sa panahong nilalabanan natin ang uh, uh, pandemya na COVID-19. Kung, matatand kung matatandaan po ninyo, bago pa man po ang uh, pagtaas o pag skyrocket ng presyo ng baboy ngayong taon dahil sa kakulangan ng supply, sumadsad naman po ito ilang beses nung nakaraang taon yung presyo po ng baboy dahil sa ASF scare. A lot of consumers were confused and scared that uh, the ASF can also spread to humans. Bumaba ang demand sa pork products at napakaraming swine producers po ang uh, nalugi. At uh, gusto ko hong bigyan diin yung uh, mga nalugi at ngayon uh, binabanggit po sa atin doon sa aming uh, probinsya sa Bulacan eh lumpong-lumpo na ho yung ating mga hog racers. Ngayon po uh, sa proposal na ibaba ang taripa at itaas ang minimum access volume sa imported pork products, panibagong dagok po ito ginawang Pangulo, Pangulo uh, nakakaharapin ng ating mga local swine industry dahil sa ASF. The threat of flooding the local market with imported pork at reduced tariff is expected to further discourage domestic hog production, potentially resulting in loss of jobs of farm workers. And that's why at this juncture, let me also spread into the records my full support to the call of our distinguished colleague from uh, Cavite, Senator Ping Lacson, not only uh, for, for PACC to uh, motoproprio uh, investigate this particular uh, issue, not only for uh, 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 the uh, amendments that our dear colleague would uh, introduce, but also perhaps 
for the body to uh, consider calling for a committee of the whole uh, investigation on this particular issue. Mr. President, I really believe that we need to revive our uh, swine industry. We must continue to boost our efforts to help our swine industry now more than ever. Considering that the ASF is a very persistent disease and the virus can survive for a long time, uh, for a very long time in various mediums, we must rather gear our efforts towards making them more efficient by providing them subsidies, training programs, and access to infrastructure, and by helping them comply with science-based guidelines on biosecurity that will allow them to handle such outbreaks now and in the future. Maraming salamat po, Ginong Pangulo, dear colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, with yes. that, I move... Close the period of interpolation, open the period of amendments, and recognize, uh, if it's all right with Senator Laxon, maybe recognize first the chairperson of the committee for uh, amendments, and then we'll recognize Senator Laxon. She already called me yesterday, Mr. Hey. President. I may recognize uh, Senator Villon before we open the period of amendments. Yes, now before that, before that, uh, all right, you're uh, mo moving to end the period of interpolation. Does it have anything to do with that, Senator Villon? You're recognized. Uh, no, I, uh, I was going to make a proposal uh, on the manner in which this will be amended so that uh, we will submit it to the floor for the consideration of the body. Basically, uh, okay. Well, the, the procedure then that we should do is to open the period of amendments and then the majority, majority leader would formally move that the text and the title of PS684 be incorporated into uh, yeah. PS676. I think that is a proper procedure, and then we amend uh, yes. the, the content. That's correct, Mr. Then, President. No? So if uh, it's okay with the minority leader, we recognize the majority leader. The first, yes. uh, the motion is to end the period of interpolation. Here yes. is no objection, period of interpolation is closed. Now, and, the, I move, uh, and I move, Mr. Yes. President, that the title and the text of PS Resolution number 684 be incorporated into PS Resolution number 676. Mr. President. Senator uh, Dillon, yes. Yes, that is precisely why I am seeking the floor. Because in my view, there are already three resolutions, uh, separate resolutions. One, a resolution urging the president to declare a state of calamity due to the severe impact of the African swine fever. That's, co that's one topic. The second issue is opposing the proposed reduction of the tariff rates and the increase in the minimum and the MAV of imported pork products. And the third is the misdeclaration uh, of the nature of the imported pork products, which uh, gives rise to this issue of uh, the tariff rates already very low because of the misdeclaration. I believe these three, Mr. President, better that we se <coughs> separate the three resolutions because particularly the third, this will call for an investigation. That's our submission, Mr. President, if it can be done. There are what, is the, what is the third, uh, what is the number of the third resolution? There is none yet, Mr. President, uh, because I am proposing that that uh, the, uh, the result, that the issue brought out by Senator Laxon be the subject of a separate resolution. Uh, it, ca it can be subsequently numbered, but this issue should be referred to the, uh, say, to the Blue Ribbon for investigation. The, the first two resolutions are just resolutions expressing the sense of the Senate. Uh, but, but Minority Leader, I think that is the amendment of Senator Laxon. He will amend this to incorporate and call for, call for an investigation. Well, precisely, sir. Uh, so we will not need the third resolution, if that no. is the case. We well, precisely, it. the first two resolutions would express the sentiment of the Senate, and copies of this resolution will immediately be sent to the office of the president. Uh, that is why the, there is a need for those separate resolutions, because it does not have to be referred to any committee. That's the sense of the Senate. But the third one, uh, as Senator Jackson himself uh, asserted, Some this needs to be investigated. Yeah. Mr. President, uh, maybe we can ask Senator Laxon and uh, his staff to craft a resolution. Just, uh, well, just as a reminder, yes, you know, these two resolutions were were uh, referred to the Committee on Rules. That is why when we took it up, it was the Majority Leader's uh, role to bring it to the to the to the floor. 
Yes, I believe I believe we have no conflict on that, Mr. President. I believe yes. what the Senate President, the uh, Senator Duilon, our, our Minority Floor Leader, is requesting that we have a separate resolution on the misdeclaration yes. Uh, yes. issue. We so I, I, I concur, Mr. President, if we could have a separate uh, resolution and then investigate. I, I, others I, who I, want the floor, Senator Pangilinan and then Senator Villar. Go ahead, Senator Pangilinan. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a procedure, procedural matter. We can actually uh, adopt the first uh, motion of the majority leader to incorporate the two resolutions. And uh, during the period of the amendment, if uh, Senator Lacson wishes to continue to amend, then we can uh, debate on the issue of the amendment in terms of uh, no. suggesting a separate resolution. I mean, that's just a matter of procedure, Mr. President. All right, Senator Villar. I would like I would like to inform the Senate President that we have to finish the first two resolution because there is a deadline after our uh, the Congress suspends in uh, uh, March 24. The President can issue another executive order to increase the tariff and to add to decrease the tariff and increase the MAV. So we have to submit it now to the president so that he can consider this. Otherwise, if we're late, then he will just issue the executive order that was recommended by the Department of Agriculture. So we have to finish these two resolutions and then we go to the, another effort, yung investigation of the technical smuggling. Okay, right. thank you. Uh, Senator, may, may we ask now uh, Senator Lacson if uh, his amendment will include the investigation or he, uh, he agrees that a separate resolution be uh, approved today. We can do it subject to style. We don't need to file it uh, tomorrow or whatever. Whether it's uh, part of the second portion of the resolution, I mean, the recommendation that the Senate conduct uh, an inquiry in aid of legislation. That's fine with me, Mr. President. Or we can uh, uh, file a, a separate resolution calling for uh, the investigation uh, in the matter of uh, the reduction. Of course, that's related, Mr. President. Reduction of tariff and increase in uh, MAF, you know, in, the, in the volume. At the same time, the issues that I raised uh, on the uh, tongue on the SOP. So, so you you do you, you 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 may agree that we need not put that here in this resolution because this will be directly um, the, sent to the president. Yes, Mr. President. But the so, but was amendment on the PACC stepping in to conduct a motor proprio investigation that could be included in this resolution uh, that we are discussing right now, Mr. President. All right. Uh, the, uh, so, uh, Majority Leader, yes, let Mr. us uh, act on this now. The and motion, also, your yes, motion, is to um, uh, open the period of amendments and in the period of amendments, incorporate the title and the text of PS Resolution 684 into 676. That's correct, Mr. President. So we, correct, the, 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 there is, um, technically, we need to strike out all the text and title of 676 and incorporate all the contents of text and the title of 684, 684 into 676. All right? That's correct, Mr. President. All right. Any objection? Hearing none. Approved. Then now Mr. we are President, in the period uh, of amendment and we are correct. taking up 676, of, uh, which the contents is uh, before you now. You, just to uh, add, what uh, is to the be, amendment now? Mr. President, just to add to the discussion with the permission of Senator Laxon, my staff in the rules can work with his staff so that we can uh, come up with a new resolution that we can approve tomorrow, Mr. President, uh, with the permission of Senator Laxon on the issue on investigation, uh, particularly on the tongue pots and the uh, technical smuggling. So I can instruct the rules committee to work with Senator Laxon's uh, staff uh, for that, uh, to to at least uh, uh, speed things up, uh, Mr. President. And may we recognize, Mr. President, Senator Villar, uh, she, I believe, being the uh, chairperson of the Committee on Agriculture, have very important inputs to add in the uh, amendments, and then we can recognize Senator Laxon. Uh, All right, President. Senator uh, Villar is recognized. 
there is a draft draft resolution combining the two and i'm looking at right now i just want to make a manifestation that on page three there is a draft resolution combining the two the two resolutions on page three lines 11 to 22 it says there they computed the loss for gun revenues because of the decrease in tariff i tend to believe that this is not the right amount because in the first place uh, i got the tariff collection of uh, of boc they don't collect this tariff even if there's a uh, uh, we're not talking of 400,000 metric times times 30 to 40 percent. We're just talking of 112,000 metric tons because seven 116,000 metric tons because uh, 272,000 metric tons are offal and that has an uh, five to ten percent tariff. So mababa na yon. So that cannot be a loss. Because even if we decrease the tariff, uh, that will be the same because it has a lower tariff na as of now. So I think this uh, 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 lines 11 to 22 is over, 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 ano, parang nakakahiya na ipakita natin sa president na mali yung computation natin. It cannot be like this because... 70% of the of the importation is uh, 5 to 10% na ang tariff. So it cannot be this big. We're talking only of 116,000 a good meat. So that's based on uh, on report of the BOC for the last three years, 2018, 2019, and 2020. In fact, their collection for 2020 is just... Uh, uh, three mi three billion, three three point two billion. So it cannot be this big because, as I said, seventy percent, whether it's right or wrong, na opal sila, but that is the practice. Seventy percent palagi ang opal, thirty percent lang yung good meat. So th there there cannot be a loss as big as this. So I want to remove this uh, lines eleven to. 22 kasi mag mag uh, mag mag conflict siya do sa assumption natin that uh, 70% of our offal which have already a tariff of 5 to 10% and 30% are MAB with a tariff of 30 to 40%. So may conflict yung uh, lines 11 to 22 dun sa ating lines uh, 24 to 30. Oh, kaya gusto kong tanggalin yun kasi okay. mali. So, what is the what is the proposal of the distinguished lady from Las Piñas? Uh, uh, so we remove we lines delete? delete those three assumptions. So delete line 11 to 2 22. 11 to 22. Yes. And um, that is your no proposal as an amendment. Yes, All right. yes. Uh, Just um, delete para hindi right. tayo mali. Uh -oh. Any objection? Wait, we will delete it, but uh, we Mr. will. Mr. President, subject to style. We have to re, re, restructure yes. the, gramma, the, the grammatics. We have to no, restructure yes, the grammar, no? Because um, we are affecting three whereases, four. Four whereases. No, no, we are not uh, affecting. Uh, it is in conflict with 2430, 20, lines 24 to 30, but that is correct. I'm deleting mm -hmm. the 11 to 22 because wrong computation. The assumption well, is wrong. And you do not intend to correct the computation no, instead? No, no more, you no more. You want to delete this? If we yeah, delete, delete this that. then, I know, the, Our the, support, way read, the way it will read, the way it will read, if you want to delete the proposed amendment, it will be paragraph. Whereas the DA, as a measure to address the increasing prices of pork and the estimated deficit of supply of about 388,480, proposes to increase the MAB from that the cost insurance and freight CIS as of January. No, no, no. We're talking of the 
Uh, Mr. President, we're talking of the wrong paragraph. It's page 3, 11 to 22. Mr. President, uh, may, may I step in? Uh, Madam yes, Chair, Madam Chair, I think you have a wrong copy, Madam Chair. Can you look at the <laughs> filed copy, Madam Chair? This is PS resolution number 684, okay. not a draft. Because oh, you're no. uh, the Senate President is absolutely correct. You are you are removing mid paragraph of uh, okay. the second paragraph. No, no, I I just uh, subject to start. Just remove this uh, computation in it's your new in this computation because this computation is wrong. So I don't mind what you indicate as long as you remove this uh, subject to style. You okay. just show me if uh, no. Because this is a wrong computation because uh seventy percent are off. Maybe Mr. President to be safe. Uh, Mr. Mr. President uh, Yes. Mr. Lang, about for gun. Wait, uh, the Secretariat has a different copy. Um Ms. Majority Leader, will you please let's yes. uh coordinate let's suspend, first. Let's uh, maybe suspend Mr. President for, uh, uh, let us suspend. Coordinate uh, the copy, uh, uh, yes, and talk to the uh, the, uh, the the staff of Senator Villar and yes. the Secretariat. You know? Maybe Mr. President, we can, uh, if possible, to save time because we have to close shop tonight early because oh, of the curfew. Oh. Uh, maybe we can suspend Muna consideration of this while our staff talk. In the meantime, let's do additional reference of business, oh, okay. Mr. President. Yeah, sure. Yes. Okay, okay. Sure, we yeah. can do that. Senator so, Luxon, Mr. President, Luxon, you're you're recognized. Maybe I can already introduce my proposed amendments oh, uh, under this resolution while Senator Villar is uh, preparing her own amendments, Mr. President. Uh, what copy are you? Who do you my, have? My proposed Six. amendments will affect her amendments, Mr. President. Okay. Go ahead. Just to say and to get this over with. Go ahead, Senator Lasso. What is your amendment? Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. After the 22nd whereas clause, insert 22nd a new whereas clause. I don't pay you. Insert. Uh, I'm not sure anymore, President. But that number 22. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Oh. Yes. Page 3, 20. line 44. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, a insert a new whereas clause to read as follows. Mm -hmm. Whereas this institution has received reports that on top of this burden to our local hog industry, unscrupulous individuals have found a way to illegally profit from this scheme through the imposition of open uh, quote, tongue pads, close quote, open parenthesis, a variation of patong or padded cost close parenthesis, amounting to 5 to 7 pesos uh, per kilo of imported pork at present rate, which could significantly increase upon the approval of the proposed tariff reduction from 30% to 5% for in quota and 40% to 15% out quota or off quota. And the MAV allocation is increased under the proposition. Uh, and number two, amendment, add a new resolutory clause wait, wait, to read as follows. Pas, pasan Any objection? Chair Houston, adopted. What is the next uh, amendment? Resolutory add portion. Resolutory clause to read as follows. Resolve mm -hmm. further to urge the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate motu proprio the allegation that certain and unscrupulous individuals contrive a scheme of tongue-pats in the proposed two-tiered increase of MAV allocation and tariff rate reduction of imported pork products amid the ASF outbreak. I so move, Mr. President. All right. What is, um, any objection? Senator Bangilinan, you're the main author now. <laughs> no objection. <laughs> All right. The hearing none. Adopted. The I will, end, I will end it there, Mr. President. Meantime, uh, a Senate resolution will be filed calling for a Senate investigation. Tapos na po yung amendments. Uh, 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 investigation in aid of legislation in connection with the reported tongue parts of 5 
pesos to 7 pesos in the importation of products under right. the map that will be contained in another in a separate resolution, Mr. President. All right, all right. Thank you. Now, in the meantime, we suspend consideration, Majority Leader, so that you will yes. uh, coordinate with Senator Subiliar on what her amendment is going to be. All yes, right, Mr. So President, that we can facilitate we need to, the facilities and continue. We'll need to suspend, Mr. President, because we cannot amend the measure by Bahala Natayo, uh, Mr. President. We need the specifics <laughs> on the measure, what we will put, and what amendments to place, so, uh, Mr. President, with due respect. So, you, so we move to suspend, suspend consideration. All right. Any hearing no objection? Just, um, consideration of 676 is hereby uh, suspended. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Yeah. President, I move for the additional reference of business. Additional reference of business. Uh, wait. Um, wala pa. Padating pa lang, uh, Senator, uh, Majority Leader. You know what? Ginagawa, ano, sandali lang, you will have to uh, bear with us because um, we have uh, locked down, uh, semi-lockdown the Senate, so there are only two yes, people yes. in the Secretariat outside of what is in front of you here. Uh, and then uh, we encourage all the other offices of the Senate, uh, Senator's offices to be on lockdown also, so that there will be a full-blown disinfection and... Uh, Sanitation. I know, but the thing lang. So, uh, can you take up something else, uh, Santo Sibiri? Is there anything else that you want uh, to we have, uh, we have the continuation, Mr. President, of the interpolations on Senate Bill number 18. Four zero, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I move that we, if the is I would just like to check, Mr. President, if our dear colleague Senator Pimentel is online. Uh, I do not see him, uh, Mr. President. Uh, unfortunately, uh, maybe we can start uh, also on the second one. Uh, this is the Philippine Boxing and Combat Sports Commission, I believe, Senator. Kiko would like to also interpolate uh, uh, tomorrow pa daw, uh, Mr. President. So uh, maybe we can ask for a one-minute su suspension, Mr. President, yeah. so that All you right. can also we'll use wait. that. Uh-oh. Uh Sige, we'll just wait for the additional reference of business. They're uh, fast-breaking it already, but uh, you'll have to bear with us. There are only two people here in the second. Yes. The Thank you, Mr. Senate President. Building. Uh -oh. Because so, there's uh, a... Senator yeah. uh, Grace Poe wishes to sponsor some of her measures. So yeah, okay, we'll we'll, we'll do that. We will have enough time. Perhaps a three minute or five minute suspension. Any objection? Hearing none. Session suspended for a few minutes.
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I believe, Mr. President, Senator Villar is ready to give the amendments of the resolution. So with the permission of the body, I move to uh, resume consideration of the resolution. PS number... 676. 676. 676. 684. 684. 684. 676 now, ang tawag doon, because we don't correct natin yung 684 to 676. Okay. All right. Any objections? Hearing none. Consideration is in order. May we recognize Senator Villar for the... Uh, Senator Villar is recognized. I just want to move that uh, lines 8 to 19 be removed. 8 to 19 be removed of what page? Page, page 3. Page 3. 8 to 19. Yes. All right. The, the 3 where says? Yes. 1, 2, 3. All right. Any objection? Chair, here's none. Uh, so, deleted... Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, with that, I move to Thank approve you. and adopt uh, Senator Solution. Senator Lacson amendment. Wait. Yes, together with the amendments of Senator Lacson and Senator Villar. May we recognize Senator Delon, Mr. President? Senator Delon is recognized. <laughs> Mr. President, the, may I propose to amend the titles of the resolution? Uh, because the way it is phrased, we are putting ourselves at the same level as the Department of Agriculture, may I propose that the, the, the title of the resolutions be worded as follows. Resolution urging the President to declare a state of national calamity due to the severe impact of the African swine fever and opposing the proposed reduction of the tariff rates and the increase in the MAV of the imported pork products. Then we address it directly to the president, uh, rather than asking, rather than trying to, right. uh, uh, recommending the Department of Agriculture. All right, I, but um, the, uh, the, the, you spell out minimum access volume instead of MAV. Yes, yes, yes right? of course. All right, subject so, to style. Okay, uh, what does the sponsor, what does the uh, author say? Senator Pangilinan agrees. Any objection? Hearing none. The title is adopted. Just one point. Senator Pangilinan. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Just, just to put it in context, uh, the reason why it was the DA earlier uh, was because it was a committee level uh, motion. So, and I agree with the Senator uh, Drilon that now that it's brought uh, to plenary, uh, we accept the amendment, Mr. President. Mr. President, yes. Yes, yeah. Senator Drilon. Yes, the uh, amendment to the title having been accepted and approved, may I propose that subject to style, the body of the resolutions be accordingly adjusted. I have not seen the uh, resolutions in myself, uh, but it should conform to the title, meaning we directly address the uh, uh, resolution to the president rather than to the Department of Agriculture. So I move that the uh, subject to style the body of the resolution be amended to reflect the uh, title. title. Sure. Yes. All right. Any objection? None. Hearing none. Adopted. Subject to style. Jordi Leader. Hello. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, with that, moving forward, Mr. President, um, I move that we uh, do the additional reference of business. Oh, wait. Adopt. Oh, we, I thought the motion was to adopt, Mr. President. No, no, motion. no, they adopt the amendment. Oh, my apologies, Mr. President. I move to adopt the resolution. Magulo uh, kasi staff ko, Mr. Mr. President. Mr. President, I move to adopt resolution number 676. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. Here's resolution 676. Uh, taking into consideration 684 is hereby adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, right. Mr. President, moving forward, I move for the additional reference of business. The Secretary will proceed with the additional reference of business. Additional reference of business bills on first reading. Senate number 2100, an act establishing a COVID-19 emergency emergency cash grant to small-scale farmers and municipal fisher folk living below the poverty line, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator De Lima. 
The Committee is on Agriculture Senate and Finance. No Senate Number 2101, an act providing for the creation, organization, and operation of virtual banks. Amending for this purpose, Republic Act Number 8791, otherwise known as the General Banking Law of 2000, introduced by Senator Marcos. The, the Committee is on Committee on Banks, go ahead. Senate Number 2102, an act implementing a lifeline rate for internet services, amending for this purpose Section 17 of Republic Act Number 7925, otherwise known as the Public Telecommunications Policy Act of the Philippines, introduced by Senator Marcos. Referred to the Committee on Public Services. Senate Number 2103, an act protecting internet consumers and promoting net neutrality in data transmissions and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Marcos. Referred to the Committees on Science and Technology and uh, Public Services. Senate Number 2104, an act providing for the modernization and capability enhancement of the Philippine National Police, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committees on Public Order, Ways and Means, and Finance. Committee Reports. Committee Report Number 204, submitted jointly by the Committees on Local Government and Electoral Reforms and People's Participation on House Number 8664, introduced by Representative Garcia, entitled An Act Providing for the Reapportionment of the Province of Bataan into Three Legislative Districts, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Tolentino. Referred to the calendar for ordinary business. Hindi kailangan play visit nito. Committee Report Number 205, prepared and submitted jointly by the Committees on Economic Affairs and Finance on Senate Number 2105, with Senators Revilla Jr., Recto, and Marcos as authors thereof, entitled An Act Mandating, the Secretaries of the Department of Finance, National Economic and Development Authority, and Department of Budget and Management, and the Governor of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas to appear semi-annually before Congress to report on the status and direction of the fiscal and monetary policies of the state, recommending its approval in substitution of Senate Numbers 432, 476, and 477, sponsor Senator Marcos. To the Canada for Ordinary Business. Committee Report Number 206, submitted by the Committees on Public Services on House Number 7332, introduced by Representative Gachalian et al., entitled An Act Renewing for Another 25 Years, the franchise granted to Mindanao Islamic Telephone Company, Inc., presently known as Dito Telecommunity Corporation, under Republic Act Number 8627, entitled An Act Granting the Mindanao Islamic Telephone Company, Inc., a franchise to construct, establish, install, maintain, and operate wire and or wireless telecommunication systems in the Philippines, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 207 submitted by the Committee on Public Services and House number 7615, introduced by Representative Romualdo et al., entitled An Act Granting Instant Data Inc., a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain telecommunication systems throughout the Philippines, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 208, submitted by the Committee on Public Services on House number 8551, introduced by Representative Red Valde et al., entitled An Act Renewing for Another 25 Years, the franchise granted to Trans-Pacific Broadband Group International, Inc., under Republic Act number 8657, to construct, establish, install, maintain, and operate communication systems for the reception and transmission of messages within the Philippines, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report Number 209, submitted by the Committee on Public Services and House Number 6255, introduced by Representative Abweg Zaldivar et al., entitled, An Act Renewing for Another 25 Years, Franchise Granted to Romeo Cabestrante Servando, presently known as Rolling Broadcasting Enterprises, Inc., under Republic Act Number 8202, entitled, An Act Granting Romeo Cabestrante Servando, a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the province of Palawan, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. To the Canada for Ordinary Business. Committee Report Number 210, submitted by the Committee on Public Services on House Number 6918. Introduced by Representatives Remulia and Alvarez, entitled, An Act Renewing for Another 25 Years, Franchise granted to Blockbuster Broadcasting System, Inc. under Republic Act Number 8726, entitled An Act Granting the Blockbuster Broadcasting System, Inc., a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Philippines, recommending its approval with amendments. Sponsor, Senator Poe. To the Canada for Ordinary Business. Committee Report Number 211, submitted by the Committee on Public Services, on House Number 7487, introduced by Representative Aumentada et al., entitled 
an act renewing for another 25 years franchise granted to Tagbilaran Broadcasting System, presently known as Tagbilaran Broadcasting System, Inc., under Republic Act No. 8149, entitled an act granting the Tagbilaran Broadcasting System a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Visayas region and for other purposes, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Pope. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report No. 212, submitted by the Committee on Public Services, and House No. 7488, introduced by Representative Romualdez et al., entitled, An Act Granting the City Government of Davao, a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio broadcasting stations in Davao City, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report No. 213, submitted by the Committee on Public Services and House No. 7496, introduced by Representatives Garbin Jr. and Alvarez, entitled, An Act Granting Servotron Industries, Inc., a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations throughout the Philippines, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report No. 214, submitted by the Committee on Public Services and House No. 7616, introduced by Representative Go, entitled, an act renewing for another 25 years the franchise granted to the University of the Philippines system under Republic Act Number no. 8160 to construct, establish, maintain, and operate for educational and other related purposes, radio and television broadcasting stations within the University of the Philippines and in other areas within the scope of its operations, recommending its approval with amendments, taking into consideration Senate Number no. 1462 sponsor, Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 215, submitted by the Committee on Public Services on House number 7618, introduced by Representative Vidal Puerte et al., entitled An Act Granting Christian Music Power Inc., a franchise to construct, establish, operate, and maintain radio broadcasting stations in the Philippines, recommending its approval with amendment sponsor Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 216, submitted by the Committee on Public Services, on House number 8552, introduced by Representative Garbin et al., entitled An Act Granting Allied Broadcasting Center, Incorporated, a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Philippines, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. The calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report No. 217, submitted by the Committee on Public Services on House No. 8553, introduced by Representative Acosta et al., entitled An Act Granting Palawan Broadcasting Corporation, a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Philippines, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report No. 218, submitted by the Committee on Public Services and House No. 8554, introduced by Representative Barber et al., entitled An Act Granting St. Jude Tadeus Institute of Technology, Inc., a franchise to construct, operate, and maintain radio and television stations in the, in the province of Surigao del Norte and other areas in the Philippines, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report No. 219, submitted by the Committee on Public Services and House No. 8555, introduced by Representative Escudero et al., entitled, An Act Granting Good News Source to Gone Foundation, Inc., a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Bicol region, recommending its approval with amendment sponsor, Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report No. 220, submitted by the Committee on Public Services and House No. 8556, introduced by Representative Garbin et al., entitled, An Act Renewing for Another 25 Years, Franchise Granted to Baycoms Broadcasting Corporation under Republic Act No. 8718, entitled, An Act Granting the Baycoms Broadcasting Corporation, a franchise to construct, install, establish, and operate and maintain radio and television stations in the Philippines, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report No. 221. Submitted by the Committee on Public Services and House Number 8860, introduced by Representative Zubiri et al., entitled An Act Granting Highland Broadcasting Network Corporation, a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in Mindanao, recommending its approval with amendments, taking into consideration Senate Number 2059, sponsor Senator Poe. To the calendar for ordinary business. Majority Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. <clears throat> Mr. President, uh, to now take up a sponsorship uh, of certain measures, uh, with the permission of the body, Mr. President, I sought also the permission of the Minority Floor Leader and our colleagues. We've done this in the past, particularly on franchise bills that uh, we will call uh, one particular set of franchise bills, for example, on the broadcast franchise bills, as this, the good sponsor would like to uh, make an omnibus sponsorship from them, as well as another 
I'll call as well for another sponsorship for the bills pertaining to telecom telecommunications. So with the permission of the body, Mr. President, first of all, I'd like to move to transfer all these measures from the calendar of ordinary business to special order. Mr. President. Any objection? Any grant so transferred. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, first to be taken up will be the uh, telecommunications measures. So I move to transfer from the calendar of ordinary business, House Bill number 73332, House Bill number 7615, and House Bill number um, 8551. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none. So uh, considerations in order. Mr. President, I move to consider House Bill number 7332, House Bill number 7615, and House Bill number 8551. And uh, I so move and ask Secretary to read the title of these three measures. The Secretary will read the short titles of the measures. House Bill number 7332, an act renewing for another 25 years the franchise granted to Mindanao Islamic Telephone Company, Inc., presently known as Dito Telecommunity Corporation. House Bill number 7615, an act granting Instant Data, Inc., a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain telecommunication systems throughout the Philippines. House Bill number 8551, an act renewing for another 25 years, franchise granted to Trans-Pacific Broadband Group International, Inc. The majority Mr. President, may we recognize our distinguished sponsor of the Public Services Committee, Senator Grace Poe, to sponsor these three measures. Senator Grace Poe is recognized to sponsor the measures. Wait. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, well, good up. Almost good evening, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. Uh, as chairperson of the Senate Committee on Public Services, it is my privilege to sponsor three telecommunications companies. We are sponsoring these three telcos to bridge the digital divide by making telecommunications services available accessible and affordable to more Filipinos. With the introduction of a new player and the renewal of two existing franchises, we hope to encourage competition, drive companies to better service and meet end user expectations. Here are the telcos up for deliberations. House Bill number 7615 under, committee, under the committee report that was mentioned, seeks to grant the franchise of Instant Data Incorporated. Instant Data aims to deliver communications technology through internet infrastructure and future-proof IP voice video. House Bill number 8851 seeks to renew the franchise of Trans-Pacific Broadband Group International, TGBI. TGBI is a PSE-licensed telecommunications operator with PESA in the Clark Special Economic Zone. They also have monitoring and operations center in Mandaluyong and a training facility in Dasmarinas, Cavite. More importantly, TGBI's network development plan focuses on marginalized schools and communities. And lastly, we have House Bill number 7332, on, uh, which seeks to renew the franchise of Dito Telecommunity Corporation. Dito, formerly Ms. Latel, was selected as the new major player in the Philippine telecommunications market. It was given a five-year network rollout to realize its commitment to provide at least 55 Mbps of mobile, of mobile data connectivity to at least 84% of the country's population. Last March 8, Dito was able to launch commercially in various areas in Visayas and Mindanao, with good connection reports, although it could improve its accessibility in order to serve the market it targets. We are hopeful that the entrance of DITO in the telecommunications market would spur the competition for a more affordable and better internet and mobile services available to more Filipinos. Nevertheless, we also recognize that the grant of franchise is just the tip of the iceberg, and we need to pursue several reforms, like the long overdue amendment to Republic Act Number 7925 or the Public 
Telecommunications Policy Act and the passage of the Better Internet Act and an Open Access in Data Transmission Act. Above all these, Mr. President, we made sure to standardize the contents, the contents of all franchises, regardless of popularity and extent of coverage. In view of our mandate and responsibility to issue franchises, we scrutinize and carefully study each of them. In fact, in our effort to continuously improve it, we introduce a new amendment on the dispersal of ownership to all franchises, except the non-stock, non-profit corporations. We changed the offering requirements from 30% of common stocks to 30% of outstanding capital stocks following the legal precedent in Roy versus Arbosa, where the court adopted that Filipino ownership must be applied to both the total number of outstanding shares of stock entitled to vote and the total number of outstanding shares of stock whether or not entitled to vote. We have likewise improved the language of the provision mandating the franchise applicants to create employment opportunities by strengthening the number of job order, contractual, and casual employees, as well as independent contractor, should not exceed 40%. Moreover, the applicants shall include as part of their annual report their efforts to regularize employees and the certification from the Department of Labor that they have complied with the employment requirements of their franchises. With, with regard to their performance for the past year, we sought the assistance of government agencies like the Securities and Exchange Commission, the National Telecommunications Commission, and the Bureau of Internal Revenue to ensure that the applicants have complied with the duties and deliverables attached as conditions for the enjoyment of franchises. As I previously said, Servicio Muna Bago Prankisa. Similarly, we accord premium to the referral of the House of Representatives to this chamber. Mr. President, if passed into law, we will not only be making way for a better and more expansive information dissemination and telecommunication service in the Philippines, but we will also be providing our countrymen with much needed jobs, especially as we recuperate from this pandemic. I thank my colleagues for your preliminary support for these measures and for signing the committee reports in a very timely manner. I hope that we can deliver this huh? with the public in mind. Salamat ko. Right, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we move to suspend consideration of these measures to allow our colleagues to study it further. Any objection? Chair, here's none. Consideration of the measures suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, moving towards the broadcast uh, measures, I move that we transfer from the calendar of ordinary business to special order, House Bill Number 6255, House Bill Number 6918, House Bill Number 7487, House Bill Number 7488, House Bill Number 7496, House Bill Number 7616, House Bill Number 7618, House Bill Number 8552, House Bill Number 8553, House Bill Number 8554, House Bill Number 8555, House Bill Number 8556, as well as House Bill Number 8860. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none. The um, uh, enumerated uh, House Bills are hereby transferred. Mr. President, uh, I move to consider the enumerated franchise bills, Mr. President. Secretary will read the title of the the short titles of the uh, enumerated. Uh, House Bill. Sorry, huh? I was <coughs> I was being. House Bill Number Six Two Five Five, an act renewing for another twenty five years the franchise granted to Romeo Cabestrante Servando, presently known as Rolin Broadcasting Enterprises Inc. An uh, House Bill Number Six Nine One Eight, an act renewing for another twenty five years the franchise granted to Blockbuster Broadcasting System, Inc. House Bill Number 7487, an act renewing for another 25 years, the franchise granted to Tagbilaran Broadcasting System, presently known as Tagbilaran Broadcasting System, Inc. House Bill Number 7496, an act granting Servotron Industries, Inc., a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations throughout the Philippines. House Bill Number 7616. 
Yes. An act seven seven six. House Bill Number 7616, an act renewing for another 25 years the franchise granted to the University of the Philippine System under Republic Act Number 8160. House Bill Number 7618, an act granting Christian Music Power Inc. a franchise to construct, establish, operate, and maintain radio broadcasting stations in the Philippines. House Bill Number 8552, an act granting Allied Broadcasting Center Incorporated a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Philippines. House Bill Number 8553, an act granting Palawan Broadcasting Corporation a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Philippines. House Bill Number 8554, an act granting St. Jude to the U.S. Institute of Technology, Inc., a franchise to construct, operate, and maintain radio and television stations in the, in the province of Sirigao del Norte and other areas in the Philippines. House Bill Number 8555, an act granting Good News Sorsogon Foundation, Inc., a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Bicol region. House Bill Number 8556, an act renewing for another 25 years, franchise granted to Baycom's Broadcasting Corporation under Republic Act Number 8718. House Bill Number 8860, an act granting Highland Broadcasting Network Corporation, a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in Mindanao. George Delita. Thank you, Mr. President. To allow, uh, to... Uh, we now move that we recognize the sponsor of the measure, the chairman of the Service Public Services Committee, Senator Grace Paul, Mr. President. Senator Grace Paul recognized the sponsor of the measure. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening again. And this won't take long because I know you were supposed to be here until 6 only. As chairperson of the Senate Committee on Public Services, again, it is my privilege to sponsor 13 broadcast franchise applications. For the broadcast, I, I mean, 11 broadcast applications. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. President. 13 broadcast applications, 11 are up for renewal, and two are new applicants. The list includes an LGU and an SUC. For brevity, I will enumerate the House bills and provide a brief description of each. House Bill number 6255 seeks to renew the franchise of Roland Broadcasting Corporation, which is located in Palawan and has been serving the far flung areas of Puerto Princesa, Rojas, and Nara. House Bill number 6918 seeks to renew the franchise of Blockbuster Broadcasting System Incorporated or more popularly known as Wave 89.1 Blockbuster, is a recipient of various franchise expo awards and is serving Metro Manila and its neighboring provinces. House Bill number 7487 seeks to renew the franchise of Tagbilaran Broadcasting System Incorporated. Tagbilaran Broadcasting operates in Calibo and Tacloban and has been broadcasting in the Visaya, Visayas region. House Bill number 7488 seeks to grant the franchise of Davao City Radio Broadcasting Station in light of the priority agenda of the Davao City government on disaster risk reduction, they plan to set up a community radio for emergency response and preparedness. The broadcast station will also be used to disseminate advocacy campaigns as well as the city's programs and projects. House Bill number 7496 seeks to renew the franchise of Servotron Servotron Industries Incorporated. Their previous franchise covers NCR not only, but in the effort to cover more unserved and underserved areas, they apply for a nationwide expansion of their broadcast services. House Bill Number 7616, taking into um, under taking into consider consideration Senate Bill Number 1462 seeks to renew the franchise of the University of the Philippines system. DZUP 1602 is the official radio station of the University of the Philippines, which airs in Mega Manila, Central Luzon, and Southern Tagalog. Its radio programs are the collab collabor collaborative effort of the different colleges and units of the university. House Bill number 7618 seeks to renew the franchise of Christian Music Power Incorporated. 
which operates three FM stations across Visayas and Mindanao. They promote Christian pop rock, music, worship, and instills Hello. positive values, life skills, and strong family relationships using Bible teachings. House Bill number 8552 seeks to renew the franchise of Allied Broadcasting Center Incorporated, in, which was incorporated in 1976. Allied Broadcasting is one of the pioneers of provincial radio broadcasting in the country. It focuses on unserved and underserved areas like Sorsogon, Ormoc, Tacloban, Cotabato, and Negros Occidental. House Bill number 8553 under, uh, seeks to renew the franchise of Palawan Broadcasting Corporation. At present, Palawan Broadcasting Corporation has radio stations in Taytay and Coron, Palawan, and in Tacbalogan, Samar. In its early days, the company operates specifically for urgent personal messages known as Panawagan. After being shut down during martial law, it continued its broadcast services in 1986, now incorporating news, education, and entertainment formats. House Bill number 8554 seeks to renew the franchise of St. Jude Tadeus Institute of Technology Incorporated, a private institution in Surigao City offering broadcast courses and the only school in the Taraga region offering AB broadcasting. The school operates its own radio and television station and its broadcast services expand to General Santos City, Davao de Oro, and Agusan del Sur. House Bill number 8555 seeks to renew the franchise of Good News Sorsogon Foundation Incorporated, a radio broadcasting station based in Sorsogon City with inspirational and motivational format. The company also owns a bookstore and a printing press. House Bill number 8556 seeks to renew the franchise of Baycom's Broadcasting Corporation. Their stations are popularly known under the branding of Brigada News FM, with services expanding in Visayas and in Mindanao. And lastly, House Bill number 8660, taking into consideration um, Senate Bill number 2059, seeks to grant the franchise of Highland Broadcasting Network Corporation, which will provide broadcast services to our Kababayans in northern Mindanao in unserved and underserved areas, specifically the agricultural towns. Mr. President, TV and radio has been part of our culture as Filipinos. It is where we source critical information on a range of issues and has been a medium for entertainment. But more importantly, it provides a crucial line of communication between and among communities. That is the reason why we welcome the grant or renewal of these franchises that will serve or has been serving the unserved and underserved areas of our country. Maraming salamat po. All right. Um, Mr. President. Yes. yes, thank you, Mr. President. This is not to object on that uh, particular franchise. In uh, Northern Mindanao, in fact, I am fully uh, supportive of it, Mr. President. But uh, uh, due to the lateness of the hour, may I just be allowed as uh, uh, one of the principal authors of DZUP, uh, may I be allowed, Mr. President, to just insert for the record my uh, sponsorship speech. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, to insert into the records. Why don't we just pass that uh, franchise in Mindanao? <laughs> I think the minority floor Are you leader, objecting? the minority floor leader is uh, doing that uh, thumbs up, uh, okay, Mr. President. Okay. So, so um, maybe there is an objection for one more day or a few hours, yeah, Mr. There President. There is an objection. We will, <laughs> <laughs> we will not entertain. Right. Majority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm very stressed. Uh, the board. <laughs> I'm being harassed, uh, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, uh, to allow our colleagues to study the measure further, I move to, um, unless uh, Senator Risa suspend would like to consideration. Um, yeah, suspend consideration of the measures, Mr. President. All right. Thank you. Any objection? Hearing none, the enumerated uh, um, House bills are sus hereby suspended consideration. And majority, for the record, majority leader and the yes, minority uh, leader and our esteemed mm -hmm. colleagues. Ah, Mr. Uh, President, before some, you uh, before you give the information, just a few housekeeping, now, Mr. President, uh, if it's all right. All right go ahead. Just really quick, uh, Senator Recto, Mr. President, texted me and he wishes to insert into the records 
his explanation of the yes vote and adoption of the proposed Senate Resolution Number 676. Am I correct, uh, Senator Recto, with a thumbs up? Yes, he just texted me. Uh, uh, however, oh well, uh, the staff of Senator Bongo wishes to insert into the records his co-sponsorship speech on the three telecom franchises and the 13 broadcasting franchises. Um, May I, may I just request our colleagues, Mr. President, although that is for the record, but may I request our colleagues that instead of the staff texting me, Mr. President, it would be helpful that the senators themselves text me because then I know it's really from them. Yeah, um, why Mr. don't President. you block their numbers, the, <laughs> the staff? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. President. Because it's not good for the staff of the senator who says, please insert to the records. Uh, because it's best, it comes from the, the our colleagues, Mr. President. All right, uh, the minority um, leader. Mr. President, <clears throat> apart from what the good majority leader said, we are in session, and therefore the manifestations that they be be co-author should be done personally by the uh, requesting senator rather than sending it by, uh, by text messages. If we were in a formal session, would the amendment, would, would this practice uh, be allowed? Otherwise, if we do this, then the amendments can be by text. And everything else can be done uh, through text messages or email. We, right. So we would suggest uh, to our colleagues that, you know, in cases of this nature, that at least they be present and, 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 and request for the record that they be made co-authors or whatever. All right, we, the uh, manifestation is well taken. Right. Thank you, Mr. President. No, I don't mind, Mr. President, if it's at least coming from our colleagues, I absolutely don't mind. But at least it's a direct message from our colleagues, uh, Mr. President. All right, Senator uh, Gordon Senator and then Senator uh, um, Ontiveros. Um, by the way, it, uh, just a reminder, it's already 6.15. Senator Gordon, go ahead. Yes, uh, I'll be brief, Mr. President. Uh, in as much as uh, this is the season for being co-authors, Mr. President, I would like to ask my good friend Grace Paul, Senator Grace Paul, if I may be co-authors of all the uh, resolutions for the franchises, uh, especially for UP, Your Honor. Uh, oh, oh. The so term would be co-sponsors. Uh, yes, uh, Senator Grace Paul, uh, to make them co-sponsors because these are house bills, so we cannot be a uh, co-authors. Oh, right. I'm sorry, I forgot. Co-sponsors. All right. Yeah. Senator Antiveros. Thank you, Mr. President. I promise I'm also mindful of the time. So this will be a very brief manifestation of appreciation. Nabasa ko po yung uh, tweet ng ibang Senate media tungkol sa mensahe uh, ng Senate President that we will remain in semi-lockdown, health protocols will be stricter. And the Senate President's um, text ended with, of course, nandun ako. Sessions are not official if there is no senator in the Senate physically present. So, Mr. President, I would just like to express my deep appreciation uh, to the Senate President uh, that uh, at the risk um, of his own health, and especially on this day that DOH reports 5,404 new cases today, a new record high for 2021, still the Senate President, by his presence, again, uh, as I said, at the risk of his own health, enables us, the majority of us who are working online, to remain uh, healthy, to feel safe, while ensuring that our Senate uh, remains official and uh, relevant and responsive to the times. Maraming salamat po, All right. uh, Mr. Thank President. Mabuhay kayo and stay healthy. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You, Senator. Thank you, Th Senator uh, Hontiveros. Uh, that leads me to the message, uh, Majority Leader and Minority Leader and our esteemed colleagues. We have just been uh, given the bad news that um, the first team of the bills and index uh, were under quarantine because uh, there were one or two of them that were involved in that uh, uh, positive uh, 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 positive COVID, COVID positive uh, results. So that the first team was um, on quarantine since last week. The second team started today. But um, one of the members came in this morning not feeling well, 
and uh, she did not realize that her well she knew she knew that her husband he his husband eh, sorry his his wife his wife was positive so he um, attended the the office this morning and they found out that he was um, not feeling well. They brought him to the hospital. He tested COVID positive. And therefore, the entire bills and index is now under quarantine. And so with that, uh, we cannot uh, do any amendments, any other bills to take up until uh, the full sanitation uh, is done, uh, at least tomorrow. You know, from tonight until tomorrow, there... Uh, Cannot be any sessions. Um, uh, we cannot do anything without the Bills and Index Office. Perhaps if we're just going to approve something, yes. But uh, anything that has to be taken down cannot be done without the Bills and Index Office. So, uh, Majority Leader, um, uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, uh, Senator Gordon, Mr. President. President, Mr. President. Uh, I, I do not want to offer the Red Cross uh, just like that. We're not in the business of profit, Mr. President. But uh, I do would like to make sure that we can help our people there. And the saliva test is quite quick. Uh, so long as it is not the majority floor leader saliva, it is very, very quick, Mr. President. <laughs> so <laughs> All right. may I suggest, All right, Mr. Uh, President, the that the we Senate Secretary and the Red Cross the, there. We can bring the Red Cross there uh, uh -oh. or wherever they are, and we can uh, saliva, do a saliva test on them, Mr. President. All right. The, the Senate, uh, the Senate Secretariat is listening, and they have been, they are nodding. They will be in touch with the with you, the Philippine Red Cross, and uh, see what they can do. But right now, they started already the quarantine on all the others who were uh, exposed to um, the the particular employee this morning. Yes, right. It's a good thing that uh, Senator Binaneba, Senator Lapid, and I were not exposed at all, and even Senator Gachalian, because uh, we did not go out of the session hall from the time we arrived up to now. Anyway, um, just to play safe, uh, we are declaring a lockdown uh, yeah. tomorrow. Senator Villar, Mr. President, then, um, uh, The majority leader will um, come up with a motion to resume uh, perhaps just to take up uh, one or two bills that uh, need not any that did not need any um, amendments, uh, so that it can be taken up next week for another day of uh, of yes, just sir. for third reading. But um, the suggestion here is a almost complete lockdown of the Senate. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. President. Uh, with the permission of the body, there there are several, just a few franchise bills that don't need, I believe, no, that don't need amendments like the broadcast franchise bills because they've been waiting. Many of them have been waiting since December. Some of them are already lapsing. Uh, maybe we can pass uh, the measure on Wednesday uh, and then we can approve it on third reading uh, next week, Mr. President. <laughs> so, <laughs> broadcast it's Wednesday. There will be a session on Wednesday of the Commission on Appointments. Because yes, so the commission and appointments are different. Yes, so they they do not have any problem with the COVID issue, and uh, they, they they do not need the bills and index. So Mr. Since President, we're there, Mr. President, Mr. since we're there already on Wednesday, we can suspend till Wednesday, Mr. President. Yes, we can do that. Yeah. Senator Gordon, yeah. yes. Mr. Uh, Senator President, Villar, Mr. President was waiting around, and then uh, Senator Gordon after. I, I, just, I just want to ask very briefly: Why is the majority, the real majority floor leader, laughing and laughing, Mr. President? <laughs> The minority leader and the private, the majority leader, leader have a private joke. <laughs> yeah. Mr. President, I have a serious motion. I move that we already approve today without any amendment the Northern Mindanao Radio Franchise Bill. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we. I, 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 the presiding officer objects <laughs> <laughs> because we have never passed a bill that we sponsor the same, the same day. day. Uh, <laughs> Mr. President, we are on a pandemic and therefore there should be exceptions. And in the now. Yes, but uh, the rules uh, dictate that we cannot because we already suspended the consideration. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. President, what is so important about Northern Mindanao that the two gentlemen are talking about it? Uh, suspended, eh? 
<laughs> Senator Villar, you recognize. Yeah, I just want to, Mr. President, to inquire what will happen to a resolution that will go to the president. Will it be delayed because we need to bring it to the president before no, March he, 24? Debsek, no, Debsek Villar is uh, typing it himself tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Without okay. the American index, uh, uh, but he can only do only one. He can only do one, so he cannot do the other the other uh, bills. Uh, he will do it himself tonight, so that it can be sent tomorrow. I will sign it. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Two. President. Thank you, Mr. There are President. two hearings tomorrow. Uh, they can you can do it virtually, but there will be no one from the Senate. All right. You can do it virtually, the two hearings that are, are going to be conducted tomorrow, energy and public services. But you you do it virtually, We there will be no, uh, the, the Senate will be a complete lockdown tomorrow. Okay, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a bit of housekeeping uh, request from Senator Grace Poe. Uh, pursuant to Rule 10, Section 18 of the Rules of the Senate, uh, in the creation of a subcommittee, Mr. President, this is... Uh, the Vice Chairperson of the Subcommittee, Senator Juan Edgardo Sani Angara, be designated as the Subcommittee Chairperson on the issue of the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation PDIC Charter under Senate Bill Number 1260 and 2089. I so move, Mr. President. All right. Any objection? Hearing none. So, adopted. Thank you, Mr. Okay. President. Uh, with that, Mr. President, I move to suspend session until three o'clock in the afternoon march 17 17. 17 march 17 2021 i so move mr president all right any objection hearing now the session is suspended until three o'clock in the afternoon of march 16 2021 stay safe everybody sorry, stay safe sorry, march 17 wednesday march 17. march 17 2021 stay safe everyone stay safe please